about to announce him right now. Oh. All right, well, good evening from Jacksonville. We have our final table finally settled here after a great day of poker. Event number one, the final table of the Run Game Series. So, right now we have in seat number one, James, the Irishman, sitting with 4 million 70 k Seat number two, Andre, coming in with 760,000. Number three, Keaton, 1.7 million. Number four, Pablo, with 5.28 million. Seat number five, we have Charlie, coming in with 2.34 million. Number six, Ms. D, coming in here with 420,000. Number seven, Daniel, 3 point, excuse me, 3.85 million. Oh boy, look at this here. I can't even read my own handwriting. 3 million, 85K. <laughs> I was rushing. All right, in scene number eight, we got Nikki with 3.96 million. And in seat number nine, Chuck with 2.43 million. And starting the final table tonight, we have our self-proclaimed greatest dealer, Oh, I'm gonna do it. I'm flipping the card. I'm flipping the card. I want you to know so, right hey, now. Table Everybody, yeah, congratulations on making it to the final table. You played brilliantly. That's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Shuffle up and deal. Good luck to everyone. Thank right. you. What is it? What is it? baby. Daddy only won the set. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys, we got about 20 oh. minutes left. What I do? Forty eight minutes. One way to look at it. We're special. Any one more thing. <coughs> 82. Good luck, everybody. 82. 82. So, I never paid the final table. Like we know. So, <laughs> That's obvious. So, I get to show the card first, then I look? Uh, it's whatever you want to do. Just make sure they, they get in the sensor. If it, if it does not get in the sensor, whoever's on that, on the tablet, will tell you to mix up your cards. Yep, just like that. Yeah, you're good like that. Holding show us. I'll keep right here. Hold one. Hold two, three. Two hundred. Two hundred. And three. All right, before any introductions on our end, we already have an all-in. D coming on in the short stack. Pretty easy all-in here with the ace-10 suited. Given the fact she was sitting on about five big blinds to start the hand. Interesting that Charlie decided to flat Pablo's open. Given the fact that it should reopen the betting, I believe. Might see Charlie back jam here to isolate after Pablo puts in the call. So we're going to see Charlie take the low variance route, just put in the flat. D with a pretty good shot of a full triple up. Get the juices flowing early into this right, final table of our run good event number one. And meanwhile, we will have a side pot between Pablo and Charlie, but it's going to be all Charlie when the flop comes queen, jack four, rainbow, middle set for Charlie here. Pablo with just some backdoor hearts, backdoor straights. D does have three kings live, plus some backdoor clubs. Try and find that triple up and stay alive. Of now, 
Charlie betting out into that dry side pot. You see Pablo quickly let it go. And off to the turn in river we will go to see if D can stick around or if Charlie is going to send her packing. So early fireworks first hand at this final table. We see a 10 on the turn, so king and king only for D, and it does not come when it's a six of clubs. So one and done for D on this final table. Pretty unfair for all of these guys to vote the only lady off the table, but I'm sure we might see D back yet again later in the series. Frequent player. But anyway, thanks everybody for tuning in. This is coming to you live from Best Bet Jacksonville, located here in Northeast Florida. This is event number one of our Run Good Destination series. You got myself, Mike, card room manager of one of our other Best Bet locations over in Orange Park, joined by familiar voice, no stranger to the mic himself, is Adonis. Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome to the final table. Thanks for the bring in, Mike, um, while we take care of some stuff here in the back. It has been a long, grueling day for these players. Um, for you, too, you, you, you worked today and then you had to come right on over, so. Yeah. Never work if you enjoy what you're doing. That's true, too. I mean, I'm just sitting here hanging out with you watching poker on TV. It's I mean, I always, I always say it, and that's why I, I always have fun, even, even in the few times I'm able to do this, because... I mean, can you really call it work? You're just hanging out watching poker, man. No, I remember, you know, when I was in high school and they asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, a guy who sits around talking to a bunch of people on YouTube There's and no Facebook. You, you told your <laughs> second grade teacher that when she no, asked No, God, you of course. Of course not. <laughs> but anyway, we do appreciate all you guys hanging out with us in the YouTube and Facebook streets. I saw a lot of early remarks rooting for Dre. I don't, I don't even know who that is. The two-seat, the two-seat. Dre is the fan favorite early on. Dre. You guys let us know who you're rooting for out there. That's cool. Oh, uh, also, I, I don't know if you did or not, but um, he's like, no, you don't even know what I was about to say. I, whatever it is, I probably didn't do it. Um, for any of you in YouTube chat, there are some commands to help for you guys if you want some information. So um, if you hit exclamation point payouts, it will show all of the payouts for each of the placings. Um, if you hit buy in, it'll show how much the buy in is for this tournament. Um, if you hit exclamation point commentators, it'll just... All of the questions that I'll probably get throughout the night, those are the commands to, to grant you that information at a moment's notice. So I'm, actually, I'll, I'll start the festivities. And I think if you hit payouts, not pause. Oh, here they come. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Other than me, I don't even know what that means. All right, let's go talk to Nightbot really quick. Nightbot, what are you doing? Has it become self-aware? Chat GPT and Nightbot have synced up. Stop all the payouts. <coughs> Ooh, that is very interesting. Okay, Nightbot. You just see a couple people out here rooting for Charlie. It still seems like Dre leading the way with the number of fans. Last time we had a, last time at least I was in the booth, I remember fan favorite kind of getting all the way to heads up. So we'll see if that can happen again for all the Dre fans out there. A couple people shouting out Charlie. Charlie there in the middle seat, the winner of that first hand. Pretty accomplished tournament player. Wait, what? It I about just gave me information and then told me no. All right, let's I try had a couple it. girlfriends do that to me in the past, so <laughs> it happens to the best of us. <laughs> All right, well, let's try that one. Got Pablo open things up here with Ace Seven. Looks like Chuck's gonna defend his big with the Queen Eight suited. You know what? I'm just gonna copy and paste payouts because apparently that command doesn't want to work. So we were, we were in the right, in the right avenue. So those are your payouts right there, guys. Um. As the players get eliminated, um, in no order, we will announce what they're going to be taking home, and that way we'll know exactly who's guaranteed what. Uh, but thanks to everyone for joining the stream. Tell us who you're rooting for. Uh, it is a final table with a bunch of locals and a bunch of good players. Um, I know Mechanic Chuck over there, a cash game player, now turned tournament savant, master, whatever you want to call it. The guy's played, I think, four or five tournaments. 
think he's cashed like all four, all five. So. It's a pretty good raid. I mean, he came up to me maybe three or four months ago. He goes, he goes Adonis, I think this tournament thing is working. I'm like, yeah, I think it is. I think you need to play more. <laughs> then you got Charlie Campos, uh, hashtag Camp Low, Mr. Saul for Y. I mean, the man is, is a tournament crusher, and uh, he is no, no stranger to final tables. And then to his left, Pablo as well has a circuit ring. Very accomplished player. Daniel also. I mean, all these guys you can look up on Hidden Mob, and I'm pretty sure you'll you'll see a bunch of commas next to their name. Yeah, Nikki's. I mean, Nikki, Chuck, like all these guys, man. I I can't say enough about all of them. I'm definitely gonna tell some funny stories about Charlie later. Uh, Mike's gonna help me. Oh, of course. <laughs> we gotta be very. Apparently, we gotta be nice. Says Charlie's kids and grandson are here checking. Oh, in, so. now it's PG thirteen. Absolutely. Man. You know what? We you let us know when they go to bed, and we'll start telling the uh, the P the PG thirteen and rated R stories. That's when it'll get fun. For now, looks like Daniel flops a monster top pair and flush draw. And he's gonna go ahead and bet three hundred K around pot size bet. A little information about Daniel as it probably folds around to him. Daniel played a rather sizable pot with 7-4 suited on the outer tables. Um, he at one point got all the way up to about 5.4 million in chips. He played 7-4 suited, and I want to say the it. flop was king high. He went runner, runner, flush, and doubled completely through um, his opponent. Yeah, I mean, that hand there, we actually saw him limp in pre-flop with the queen tray suited, rather than opening out of the cutoff, so... Obviously could take some unorthodox approaches. <laughs> Keaton looks down at ace-queen offsuit, and he's going to go ahead and cut out a raise. And it looks like he's going to go ahead and make it 200K. The blinds are 40,000, 80,000 with an 80,000 big blind ante. Uh, so the blinds are climbing, but these players are extremely, extremely deep. Um, so I'm looking forward to nothing less than a dynamic, fun, chip-moving final table. What about you, Mike? Yeah, I'm hoping to see some fireworks, obviously. A lot more fun as a viewer to see chips flopping around. Uh, for you guys commenting in YouTube about the graphics, they are good on our end. I know when I'm watching on my phone, I've had that problem before. I have to go into the YouTube settings Talk and change it from auto and choose, like, always stay on the higher 1080i or something like that. There you go. If you leave it on auto, sometimes it does kick it to a pretty bad outlook. I know I've had that problem myself. There we go. If you guys have any more questions, you let me know. And uh, we'll try to take care of it for you. Um, you know, technology is ever-changing and ever-evolving. Yeah, so. fireway questions, fireway jokes. I don't care what you Whatever say. Whatever you got. I mean, just make sure it's clean. We're just here to hang out and watch this final table with you all, see who's going to take home that 69K first-place prize. Go Daddy Irishman. Don, I would like to know your relation to <laughs> the Irishman, if you don't mind, considering your verbiage there. <laughs> Snicky opens to 160K with Jack-10 suited, and what do you know it, James the Irishman... Looks down at Ace-4 offsuit. He's going to go ahead and fold. Andre. Is, oh, so there's the uh, coveted Dre. And then Keaton will choose to complete in the big blind for an additional 80000 So we're going to go ahead and go uh, heads up to a flop. Ron, I will get your question for payouts. Just uh, let me get through this hand really quick, and I'll, I'll definitely get those payouts for you in the, in the Facebook chat. In the meantime, we got checked over to Nikki. Let's see if he wants a C bet. Decides not to. The seven high flop pretty good for the big blind defending range. You're going to see people defend their big blind with a lot of hands that kind of connect with that board on the flop. I imagine that's why Nikki chose not to see bet in the spot. Now Keaton taking advantage of that dynamic, seeing Nikki check back. More than likely, Nikki doesn't have an overpair to the board and he's just holding some high cards himself. So that's why we see Keaton start leading out. Probably thinks. I think he has something like ace high. Get a better hand to fold. Uh, now that you're in the chat, Regina, I definitely want to have some remarks after the hand um, about your hand that you played with Daniel. Yeah, well, we saw Nikki actually put on a sneaky raise here. Puts the pressure back on Keaton given how short stacked he was. Nikki gets a drag in that pot. So, Regina Hampton in the YouTube chat played 
by far the biggest part of the tournament with Daniel. Um, and obviously for everyone watching, you guys can weigh in and give your opinion as well. I was looking on the outer tables, and to make a long story short, uh, the flop was 10, 9, 8. Daniel had 6, 7. Regina had pocket 8s. But there was a shorter stack that was all in as well on the flop. Um, the pot was maybe a little under 200K. And Daniel ships it for like 2.4 million. If the details are wrong, let me know, Regina. He ships it for about 2.4 million, and the action's on her with bottom set. Michael, ask you first. Do you do you make the call there? Do you fold? I mean, I would do whatever the wrong choice was in general. <laughs> I, I told her, and, and I told Kirk, who was dealing as well. I said I, I can't fold bottom set there. You know. Uh, I know how many big blinds are in the middle. I know how many big blinds are in play, but I just think I'm in a dream scenario. I think I have him set up. You know, I, I think he, he, he could uh, be chasing, but that's just my opinion on the subject. And she's right. I mean, if she if the board pairs, she would be in Daniel's seat with an overwhelming chip lead. Um, but I just I found that hand to be absolutely monstrous. 5.4 million went in one direction. And... Uh, few hands later, Regina did get eliminated. But it's good to see you out there, Regina. I would have called too. I would have called too. But uh, we see Andre, a friend favorite in the chat, a.k.a. Dre. A.k.a. Get Rich or Die Scratching. <laughs> I just confirmed this is a real YouTube channel, and it looks pretty dope. I cannot wait. I know what I'll be watching uh, after this stream. I cannot wait to go look at that. Uh, but Dre's going to take it down there with Kings. Right, Pablo he's around. folds in the big blind. And uh, we're just going to keep on rolling there. Dre continues to live on and live strong. So, yeah. Dre, the fan favorite by far, it seems like, in the YouTube chat. Given the fact he has a YouTube channel, it makes a lot of sense. Oh, my God. So, we're going to keep him around. Kings are good. I'm just going to look. Based on the content of this channel, I mean, him taking down first place could be good for everybody. Good for viewership. Oh, my Lord Jesus. Get rich or die scratching. Oh yeah, I am. Just I got it. I got it saved already. You have to actually watch it a little bit later, or maybe when they go on break. Oh, he has 129,000 subs. Oh yeah, and you got that's, that's why there's so many over out there rooting for him. Wait, what? So let's go. Why did he tell me this? <laughs> he's just like he's living a, under the radar. He's, he's humble. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Cool. Check him out on YouTube. Get rich or die scratching. That's Andre there in the two seat, and uh, he's still in the tournament. So, oh, Keaton just shoves it there with yeah. ten nine off. Yeah, sitting about fourteen bigs. No scratch. Open shove. You're obviously off. hoping to steal the blinds. Shoving into two players that have enough chips, they don't want to take a sizable dent, so they're gonna they're gonna play pretty tight in that in that formation. Pablo, Charlie, both very experienced as we talked about on this table. Pablo there in the fourth seat, Charlie. <laughs> They're right in the middle. Wearing the saw for Y hat. It's a big talking to him, I think, a little over a year ago now. I think it's about two years since he went to Saw for Y Academy. He said that's when it really jumped his tournament game up. I know he gave a lot of credit to them. Heard, you know, we always hear mixed reviews out there in the world. It's nice to hear from somebody face to face that they enjoyed it. Well, Things started clicking for him since. We've seen him win some tournaments on here. I mean, every time I check his Facebook, he's right on tabling something or bagging something up. So. He literally beat Matt Berkey heads up in a tournament. I was going to say that. That's uh, went, went to a school and then beat him in a tournament shortly after. Pretty fun story. That's like, you know, Daniel's son beating Mr. Miyagi. That's just like, that's big stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't think he should take that too lightly. But, I mean, Charlie's a very accomplished player. So is Pablo here opening pocket eights to 200,000. Pocket eights is a pretty monstrous hand on the button. Pablo's going to be opening very light given how... Big of a chip stack he has. Daniel quickly makes the call with Queen Jack offsuit. These are two pretty big stacks on this table. Getting ready to battle. And a button versus big blind formation tends to be a little bit more bluff happy. Daniel did flop a gut shot with his Queen Jacks. Checks it over. See Pablo put in a C bet. So may like to check it back. It goes a little under half pot, betting 225. Oh, snaps him off with the gutter ball. Yeah, 225. <laughs> Just like Very two quick. and a quarter, I'm in. Ten on the turn. Look at him. He's so relaxed, like he knows it's coming. Well, not there on the turn as it comes deuce of diamonds. That might get Pablo to slow down, though, how quickly he called the flop. Sometimes, though, I mean, I don't know how much Pablo has history with Daniel. Sometimes you'll pick up timing, tells him players. 
A lot of them like to put in fast calls with draws rather than sit with the discomfort of a decision. Pablo did check it back, and now we went off to a brick six on the river. Here's the board just in case Daniel has something like seven, six, five, six suited. Maybe even like well, six, eight is going to be pretty discounted since Pablo is holding two of the eights. But big blind could easily defend some suited connector type hands that include a six. That's what Daniel's going to rep, throwing out a bet. But he bets so small, Pablo's snap calling at 80. <laughs> Daniel announces, I don't have it. Daniel is a character, and, and by that I mean literally just put him somewhere in an animation and he thrives. He's, He's wearing two jackets sewn together right now. <laughs> he, uh, the hand he played with Regina, I mean, he just gets up and starts screaming in the chair. I mean, he is he is a animated character. It's kind of like, it's all a part of his, you know, shtick. It's all a part of his, um, the character inside of him. I'm interested to see what happens at this final table because... You know, you're not playing up. You're not playing against the what 961 players. You're playing against eight of the you know best remaining players. So, we'll 961. The total number of entries in this event. Yeah, Thomas is talking about there. These are the final eight. Yeah, this is a $400 buy-in. First place, almost 70k. You got a, a pretty sizable chunk of change. Pay jumps will start increasing. Could see some pressure from people trying to ladder up. I wonder what the, um, I wonder what like the median stack is right now. I know at some point it was like 2.4 billion was standard stack. So it should be right around 3 million right now. Eight players left, about 20, I think it was 24 to 26 million in play. Regina, you're gonna need to. All right, so we saw Pablo open and both blinds put in the call. So three ways we went to a king at jack six, two club flop. So Pablo's hand is best with top pair. We see Daniel with a straight draw. Should a 10 come out? We just saw Pablo with a pair. Daniel with a straight draw on the last hand. Let's we'll see how this one plays out. And once again, uh, Daniel makes no hesitation at all calling with the gutter ball, trying to hit the 10. And let's see if he can find some luck this time around. That's a tray of clubs, so... Now he has a flush draw to go with that straight draw. I see Pablo slow down, just check it back for pot control. Doesn't want to bloat it up in case he reads Daniel for a draw. Most likely it was a flush draw. Happened to be a straight draw this time. When the river bricks out, Daniel doesn't try the bluff this go around. Checks over to Pablo who bets and takes it down. Pablo showing the king to the table there. Probably trying to build up a little bit of an image. He's Going to be betting with the best hand. Hope to use that in the future when he starts bluffing, potentially. Especially given how big of a chip stack Pablo has, he might start putting pressure on everybody else at the table. And that's what he's known for. Um, so that's a good event to do it. Yeah, he's... Man, he, I mean, that's his game, right? Like, put pressure in situations um, where, you know, pressure is best applied. Yeah, if you have the short stack, if uh, he has an overwhelming chip lead, you better believe he'll pick some of those spots uh, a little more frequently here at this final table. Yeah, especially in a lot of a lot of these type of buy-in events, you can put pressure to people that might be looking for those nice pay jumps since they're getting sizable. You know, you bought into four hundred dollars on a Saturday afternoon. Now, one more person busts out, you make an extra one or two k. You might try to wait out some of the short stacks. So, wouldn't be surprised to see Pablo start targeting those more middling chip stacks. That would be awesome. So Keaton, the short stack did. He opened to 200 and what, Pablo 3-bet him to 400, is that right? Yeah, so it looks like Keaton opened off of the shorter stack. Pablo putting in a 3-bet here, so it has to be strong. Jesus and it is with aces. Somebody grab. About, you know, we were just talking about Pablo putting pressure on stacks. Keaton being the short stack is not somebody that Pablo would put pressure on too much. It has to be a monster. <laughs> Well, is so Keaton strong. very aware of it. Pretty pretty fast it's fold. Like Didn't really have to think twice. The min click is so strong, as as uh, the player at the table remarks. Min click there is just so so strong. Want to get chips in the pile with aces? I mean, plus Keaton was only on about 14 <laughs> blinds, so raising it up two more blinds. 
Oh, you knew? Yeah, I can see because the min click, man. Uh, Carson, what you got here, man? 450k stack blinds. 12,000. 12, 12, 6. Jack's under the gun. I raised 36,000. Uh, no, you can't. Uh, no, don't smoke. It's up to you. If you want to get cracked, you go five ways to the ball. All right, Jamie. Balls. <laughs> of course not. That you got 450? I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Uh, uh, you're kind of in the same predicament, Carson, as Regina. No, 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 I don't know yeah. what you're Honestly. Plus some 40 blinds <laughs> yeah. to start the hand. I think Keep you're getting it, it all in no matter what you do. Yeah, literally the same position as Regina. Regina, uh, for context, Regina flopped bottom set against oh, a flop straight. So maybe not bottom set, but, you know, are you really going to be able to fold middle set there on such a dynamic another, board? Another hand for Pablo. It's going to look like he's maybe up to something. Although he's shown the goods most times he's had to show down. But make out with pocket nines. This is everyone's Let's worst nightmare, too, because everybody knows how active Pablo can be, no matter the implications, right? Like, even at the beginning stages of the tournament, even at the final table, he's not really going to deviate from his game plan. Well, he deviated from winning this pot, it looks like, as Daniel flopped top pair on King-7 Trey. James also flopped a piece with the sevens, but when it checks to Pablo, he's going to see bet. Daniel's putting in a raise. Instantly puts a raise yeah, in. Very fast. Very fast. I mean, it seems like he plays his hands face up, right? Like, he's just, his his one speed is go. Which does make sense right about now. Again, Keaton there in the three seat, sitting on about 12, 14 big blinds. He's the short side of the table, so you can kind of play straight up, especially against the chip leader. You don't want to let him turn a nine by trying to play coy with your top pair. Hey, Tanya. Especially if you think Pablo is c-betting with something including an ace. You don't want to let an ace peel off and suddenly have to let go because you can't face the pressure. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, you know it, you know it could uh, get very well. Well, yeah, if Daniel sticks around, I could see I could see some stuff happen. Yeah. He's better than him. <laughs> he's the guy, I mean, you just never really know what he's capable of in any moment. Same way with Pablo. Action on Pablo, he's just going to let go of the eight tray. Finally found a hand he can let go of. Let somebody else win a pot. Got over to Daniel. We see him limp in rather than opening it up. Second time he's limped in. Chuck going to come along from the button with the queen jack. James in the small blind, such a good price. Puts in the call now. The fan favorite Dre. Dre's gonna be He's all gonna in. He's gonna heave, hose, ship it all in, and Dre's gonna be all in. Everybody's Everyone. gonna be out there rooting for him. Here it comes. All Dre fans, hold your breath, close your eyes, and look away from the screen. I'll throw the prayers up in chat. Obvi. Good luck over there. We're gonna need Andre's tens to hold here. As he is all in. You know, I didn't notice that he became sneakily the short stack of the table. I mean, until it got to him and his stack said five big ones. I'm like, oh, he called. Wow. Oh, that's great. That's great news for uh, Andre. There. I mean, is it? The pot yeah. hasn't gone to him yet. No, but with Daniel calling, we actually see Chuck let go of Queen Jack. So you got the better hand to fold. If Daniel oh folds, Chuck calls. So you'd much rather get in against Jack 10 than Queen Jack. All right, let me get some one times in the chat for Dre. One time. All right, clean flop, seven high. One time. And no nine, oh, no boy. jack. And it fades it. And the one time comes through. Dre's going to hold. He Dre's going to double up. And with all the dead money in there, we actually see him get almost a full triple up. Wow. That's huge. That is huge for Dre. Yeah, going from five big blinds to 15. Very, very playable stack now. And obviously got through the big blind in Annie. Oh, boy. That's it, man. I mean... I don't. <laughs> Chat blown up. Chat's yeah. gonna blow up for this guy. Let's go. <laughs> they love him. <laughs> I love him too. I don't know who he is, man. It's very reminiscent. We had a tournament here. God, almost probably a year ago now. It What's wasn't that? over the summer when Mike the Missile made a deep run oh. and all the missiles kept firing out. <laughs> so it's reminded me of <laughs> Mike the Missile. Yeah, the fan favorite. Yeah. Fan favorite always always seems to stick around a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah he gets extra energy from the crowd. I could literally see Will Simpson in his living room like, Dre, 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 Dre. <sighs> the crowd goes wild. <laughs> I'm not really sure why Daniel called there with Jack. Chasing me, yeah. I mean, uh, it was, I mean, it was for five bigs, but 
still. That's what you put yourself in weird spots by just limping in like he did. Mm -hmm. you know, if he opens, everything becomes a little bit more defined. But he went for the knockout. He would have been the most ha hated man on YouTube for a little while if he knocked uh, Andre out. Yeah, he would. Yes, he would. Well, up comes 8-5 Trey. So we got a gutter ball for Keaton and Daniel there with bottom pair. Fires, fire, fire. And uh, he's going to go ahead and take the pot down. Do not talk to him now. Nah. Talk to him real. So now for realsies, Keaton's the short stack. Is no, Keaton the short stack? Definitely That's just now. so crazy definitely because, now. like, visually, it looks like he has chips. But we know because small, you know, small blind, big blind's 40, 80. Or now it's 50, 100, isn't it? <laughs> Damn. Nathan Campbell, this indeed the final table. You have myself, Adonis, and right across from me, Mike, the card room manager at Orange Park Jackson. Yep, hanging out, watching this final eight players now battle it out. It's a little over 69K up top in this $400 buying event. Uh, limping with ace check, man. He just knows. Limping is pimping. <laughs> just knows. He's a firm believer. I mean, his name's Daniel. Daniel Negreanu loves the limping is pimping strat. But that's gonna, this is where it gets complicated. Now it invites everybody else to kind of limp behind. Maybe he thinks he can navigate those weird spots better than his opponents. Wait out some short stacks to bust. Now as played, limped pot, four ways to the flop we go. And what a flop Jeez. it is. King, Jack, 10. Oh, Peace for everybody here. See Pablo there holding the queen. He's got an open Lord. straight draw. Ace, Jack with Charlie, pair and a straight draw. Can you ever uh, bet six. if you're Charlie your first act, man? You're just like, yeah. ugh. Oh, see Daniel be the one to fire at it with his pair of 10s. Just betting a little 100k. That is the minimum bet here. One big blind. Charlie looks like he's already James, done with the hand. James turned to double gutter. Any seven or queen would make him straight. Obviously, he prefers the seven, as the queen would give an ace a straight. Speaking of queen, we see Pablo call with his, hoping to hit it. Charlie comes along as well. So, stage oh four. Is it? Look at Daniel God. get rewarded oh with a ten God. on the river. He bet a hundred k with a ten and so a board that's so dynamic and gets rewarded on the river. He must be living right and he must have ate his Wheaties this morning. This is crazy. This is absolutely insane. He'll check to him. He'll bet. <laughs> this is just so sick. Look at him. 500. And he knows he has the best hand. He knows he has the best hand. <laughs> As Jordan Facebook points out, James was open on the flop. That is correct, Jordan. That's my apologies. I said double gutted. Did flop open ended. Jordan, you're a stud. This is, this is why Jordan wins and I don't. Uh, calm it out. <laughs> Look at this, man. Look at this. This is such a weird hand. Such a weird spot. Well, yeah, because, I mean, obviously Charlie now wishes he'd open Ace Jack. Um, he's going to have to pay it off. He knows Daniel's capable of making some funky moves. Tries to pick off a bluff. <laughs> Doesn't happen there. As Daniel had it. <laughs> This guy's a, he's a character, man. He literally is saying toot toot when he wins a hand. <laughs> I know the reference. I don't know if it, everybody else will catch it, but nope. Ned's declassified survival guide. It's God, it's, it's really, really complicated reference, but all I can do is just laugh at him, man. This guy is a character, man. He's a fool. But he won the pot, so that, that's really what this game is about. That's what this final table is about. Whoever has the most chips wins. So a uh, nice hand there, Daniel. Just a tough spot for Charlie. You know, you limp ace jack and you, you catch a piece. And then the guy to your <laughs> left just river strips. Like, mm. <laughs> ah, it's going to fold around to that fan favorite. Trey oh. wakes up with a monster. Pocket Kings. Dream spot. He would be opening, opening meaning raising a lot of hands here since he's in late position. <laughs> Super goaded, Mickey. Super goaded. Uh, Pablo in the small blind with Queen Trey suited. And uh, that should find its way into the mug rather quickly. I don't really know what he's hemming and hawing about. Like, it's Queen Trey. What are you doing? For that, we actually saw Keaton let go of Ace 4. Given his stack, he may have been tempted to shove, but fortunate for him he didn't as he would have shipped it right into Andre's Kings. No, not have been fun. You know, you all mix your play yeah. up every 15 minutes. Andre gets to drag that pot uncontested after raising up those Kings. 
He will raise me that hand. Huh? Especially given his chip and stack, those extra couple of big blinds will come in handy. <laughs> He's creeping ever so close to that beautiful 20 big blind mark. That's when you have a little bit more wiggle room to make a move, extend that chip stack. Definitely be 10-4. <laughs> Yeah, like he's kind of on notice now. Everybody saw him shut down 10 4. So they, you know, they think he's playing crazy. They're not going to give him that much credit. And it's like, man, he's just got there on the river. He bet a 10. Now we're going to see an 8. Keaton ship it all in. Ace 9, late position. Over Look at the Pablo. He's such a gambler. He looks at 6 7, so he goes, ooh. You're not calling there with that hand. What are you doing? You want to call with it. It's pretty looking. I know. It's pretty right? looking. <laughs> Suited connectors? You have like a million. Hey, Ricky, what's up, man? I miss you too, man. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a man, I'm honest, okay? I was totally stalking Ricky's Facebook account <laughs> like five days ago because I'm like, man, I really miss Ricky. Like, he made a post or something, or I was like, you know, I really miss Ricky, man. He's a really cool guy. Uh, met him, met him via the live stream. Been doing it for a while, and um, I'm like, I wonder what he's up to. And I see him like posing with these two guys at some comp. You know, he's a business guy, always, always doing great things. But I say that to say I miss you too, man. I miss you too. Ooh, yeah, ooh, indeed. We saw Chuck open under the gun, which is usually a very strong raise. Opening at first to act, and James. Putting in a three bet. Oh, like look at Pablo on. putting the glasses up. He's like, roll. It's oh, that's a, that go. was a frustration. Put the glasses up. It's facing an under the gun open and under gun one, under the gun one three bet. Pablo can't do anything but fold here. One by one, everybody's got to let go. You saw a lot of real hands have to fold, and you're actually gonna see Chuck let go of Ace Queen because he believes this three bet. Well, everybody outside wow. of Daniel is just kind of like keeping it close, right? Like, or <laughs> sneak. That was a sneaky move by the Irishman. I mean, this table's been playing fairly straight up. And that's why I said he's nice. Bro. You know, he, he picks his spots really careful. Um, knows if he's probably getting called, he's going to need to hit two pairs and trips and some trips. Shenanigans. Obviously, if he goes by, we saw Chuck not really even hesitate before he whipped that ace queen in the mug. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> oh, James the Irishman has a real hand. Fresh off the, uh, you know, bluffy three bet. He wakes up with a monster. So he's gonna raise it up himself. And oh, this is bad news for Keaton. Oh Lord Jesus! Here That's comes. It. It's it. All in from Keaton with the ace queen, sitting on eleven big blinds. Break out your tiny violin. Very automatic shove from him. Just unfortunately, he runs into. James is ace king. And this is bad. This is very bad. A quick call by James, and we'll be off to a run out. This is for Keaton's Keaton tournament life, right? Looking for a queen to stick around. We'll see if the ace king can hold or if Keaton can find a queen. Queen Ooh, is spicy. Two look clubs. at that. Ooh. No club on the river. It so. was still a sweat, though. Yeah. Uh, it was still a sweat. sweat. Yeah. Super sweat. I held my breath. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Queen spiked twice for Keaton and then still faded the clubs. What was what was the percentages there uh, going to a five? It couldn't have been good. It's like three to one. It's 75, 25 ish. Yeah, that's what I figured. Man, well, this is the final table, my friend. These are the final eight players remaining. We had 961 entrants into the tournament. And we are now left with our final eight. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of woke up the entire table up there. He was finding the queen twice. Then <laughs> everybody kind of expected to ladder up. <laughs> so no shortage on the sweat, that's for sure. Yeah, even with the queen on the turn, you're like, man, like, can he hold? And he definitely did. It was a, it was the sweat of the sweats. Um, but nice hand there. Keaton is going to find the double up. James the Irishman still has plenty of chips. Uh, and and your, your resident favorite, Andre, is now going to open it up to 250K. He's going to try to find the same luck with Ace Queen so far. So he'll also probably take 
No three bets. Happy to just go ahead and steal the blinds, keep chipping up. You can take the low variance approach to chipping up, and it's always welcome. And now, it's after Chuck calls with the four zone small, James is getting a great price to come along with nine, seven hearts. You cannot hit your nine. You know why? Because nine represents my phone number. Nine, 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 never mind. <laughs> Solid logic there by Daniel. <laughs> so the flop comes down. Ooh. Eight, seven, seven. Huge Wait, no, Chuck. No. No. Uh-oh. This is bad. James with the call. This is very bad. This is very bad so for, for Chuck. For Andre fans, he gets out of there dirt cheap. Oh, my God. This goes is so bad all for in from Chuck. Oh, my God, Chuck. Oh, James. No. Chuck. Chuck just needs a four or running five, six. Nope, five, six, no good. Just a four. Oh, boy. All right, so Chuck's going to need a stone cold two outer to stick around. Out there on the turn. Out there on the river. Chuck. Fours. Chuck was short in the small blind. Just got it in. And uh, my friend Chuck's going to get eliminated. Tough hand. Just like that. Seven players left. Yeah, so... Inset, you know what? Let's just do this. Let's just go ahead and Suddenly, everyone locked up 7,500 now. Okay, so in, in eighth place, excuse me, uh, Chuck's going to be taking home $6,270. Everyone's playing for 67000 That's where you want to hit. That's where you want to be. Um, but you got, you got six other players out last. So, with that being said, next player is going to take home $7,510. Let's see what happens. Let's see who wins. Who you got your? Who do you have your uh, your monopoly money on to win? Monopoly money. Ooh. Like, like I like. I don't know why. But I do like the Nikki sneakily over there. Do you? It does have position on Pablo and Charlie, which is nice. Nice to be in position against those two, and a little bit, you know, having position right there on Daniel, the wild card. He could always spaz out. Maybe you pick up something. He's got Andre and Keaton to his left, who are a little bit shorter, so you don't have to worry about them pushing you around too hard either. Mm -hmm. He's in a nice spot to kind of just chill, see what comes his way, which is always comfortable. You know? It is, uh, especially uh, at a table like to, this. Because originally I wanted to say Pablo, but you got Charlie on your left. That's scary too, so well, and fireworks could happen. There you go. That's what I was going to say. Fireworks could happen everybody's, at any point. Everybody's firing out who their Monopoly money is on. It's beautiful. Dre has boardwalk. That is the <laughs> best response of the night. <laughs> Yo, I wish I could. I wish I could like it, <laughs> hug it, kiss that comment, man. That Print is it out, frame it right here in the booth. I mean, you want to put that on comments? <laughs> best board comments board. of the year, right there. My man got Borowak. He printing it. But uh, Keaton here is going to be printing some tournament dollars. He's going to bet 200k. Andre, friendly neighborhood Dre, there with bottom pair, and, and a hope and a dream. Seems like he's trying to get a read on Keaton here. Yeah, if he replays the action, Keaton did raise it pre-flop from under the gun. So very easy for him to have an ace in his hand. I would imagine that's what Andre's thinking over. You know, replay the action, double check yourself before you make a move. You don't have to play fast. As long as you come to the right decision. Yeah, that's the only that's the only thing. You want to come to the right decision. Hey, what's up, Seth? How you feeling? Carl says Charlie all the way. So I see some people uh, have their Monopoly money on Charlie to take it down. I see some Dre's in the chat. I see a few Nickies. Um, I don't know, man. I'm really, I'm, I'm kind of feeling James the Irishman. Man. He, I don't know. Like he's. Is it because you're both Irish? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely Irish. St. <laughs> Paddy's Day, everybody. Oh, it is St. Paddy's Day. <laughs> James the Irishman should win. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. I don't know if I got green on. I think I do. All right, look at Charlie here, ace four suited. He's gonna make it 200 to go. So it seems like that's the standard open 2x. Yeah, I mean, everybody's pretty shallow. No reason to do anything more than a min raise, pretty much at all times the rest of the way. I see Keaton defend his big blinds. So him and Charlie going off to a flop of 10 six six two diamonds on board. So there's enough flush draw uh, for Charlie Keaton. Really just hoping he doesn't bet. Hoping he can find a, a card that will give him a little more equity on the turn. But I don't think he's going to be able to see the turn. Feels no. no. like Charlie's going to see that here. He was the pre-flop raiser, so he has a lot of strong hands that he could have. His actual hand is pretty good with enough flush draw. Yeah, so. betting a quick fold there from Keaton. So Charlie's going to take it down. Ladder so up a little bit. Snap call coming out to root on their boy Charlie. 
He's wearing snap call, clo snap call clothing right there. You can see the emblem on the back. So It's always nice to see the big wigs show out for their guy. You know? Yeah, I see it on the back right there, snap call. Uh, if That's you guys don't mind, I mean, drop a link. You know, if somebody wants to buy some of your merch, see what you guys are messing with, drop a link to snap call merch. As you can see there, uh, looks like Charlie's rocking some of it right now. So he faded the snap call there. Got the snap fold. That'll be my brand You're so soon. punny tonight. Oh, Look at you. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Daniel here just calls with, uh, looks like King Nine of Diamonds. Nikki's going to go and fold. We have seen Daniel limp in quite often. Not something you see a lot on tournament final tables, that's for sure. But we'll see how it fares for him. Uh, seen mixed results so far. Yeah, and, and he's in the hand with his nemesis, Pablo. They've been going back and forth. Tim and Pablo every time. <laughs> All right, Pablo waits for Daniel to stop uh, giving away information when he's talking and then checks. <laughs> <laughs> Flop came down, jack six deuce, goes quick check check. Uh, no. Diamond draw yeah, though for Daniel. Diamond. Quick checks again. Queen on the river. Pablo's just nine high. May decide to bluff at it. Does not. Checks it over. Daniel's king high is going to be best. He's out of control. You better pop on red. Of course. Of course. The banter between these two is just going to stay good, I feel like. Pablo and Daniel clashing with each other early and often on this final table. Been pretty entertaining to watch. Very different personalities as well. Yeah, he's, he's uh, I mean, normally, which is fine, it's okay, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But normally when we get to final tables, everybody's kind of stoic, everybody's kind of keeping their eye on the prize. Daniel, I mean, you're going to get what you're going to get with him. He's living his best life. And, in his defense, it's a pretty party-filled weekend. We had TPC here in Jacksonville. Yeah, it's been a, it's uh, been a wild week. We're in Florida, which is spring break capital and spring break weekend. I'm pretty it's sure it's Patty's Day. It's been a it's been a pretty wild one out there. I hope everybody stays safe, continues to stay safe, drink responsibly, and lots, whatever you're into. Always. Definitely been a very fun weekend. He said I can beat that one. First one I saw that I could beat. Hope everybody's got all the water and Gatorade lined up for tomorrow morning. Those $300 Meanwhile, Pablo, Charlie, clash Ooh. on a king so eight, has nine, seven. Ten. Yeah, Pablo open ended. Charlie decides not to go out of bet, checking it back. So now Pablo is going to fire out with his open ended straight draw on the five on the turn. Wow. Pretty safe turn card to fire here and try to steal it. Charlie's really thinking about it. A little blind versus blind action. Yeah. Charlie was a pre-flop raiser after Pablo went in, so <coughs> pretty easy for Charlie to have a king there. Decides not to bluff it, just goes ahead and lets Pablo steal this one away. You're a Guinness man, Trey, and I love that. Can't do the stouts too much. I tried, I tried yesterday. I did my best. Yeah. I tried to find one I liked. No good. Just not, just not it. Just not it for me. Sometimes for me. It's not. You do you, Trey. You do you. Good job. You do you, baby. Oh, it's Pablo. Huh? It's your largest too, right? He's got a circuit. Right? No, gu no Guinness for me today. <laughs> Don't see Nikki. Let it go early. Still folding around. She gets all the way around to keep him. Two hundred grace. Two hundred. Two hundred. Two hundred. Two hundred. Now we did see Keaton open it up, trying to maybe steal the blinds with his 10-9. Both blinds called. He had a 9-8-6 flop. Mm. Action. Mm. Good to come in. Everybody's got a little something. Yeah, Daniel, the gut shot straight draw. Charlie, pair and open and straight draw. Keaton, top pair. And got shot straight draw. Things could get interesting here. Roughly. And it uh, looks like Daniel's asking questions to Keaton about how much he's playing as if he's posturing for a bet. But um, he will check it to Keaton. And let's see what Keaton does here. 24 bigs. 
He's going to go ahead and bet 200. And Charlie's sitting here in just a, a really weird spot because you're you're in between a rock and a hard place, right? This is a really, really complicated spot for Charlie to be in. Obviously, he can't see the other player's holdings, but it's just, man, he's going to be really paying attention to Daniel's action here. He's like, eh. I think that's why he puts <clears> in this small of a raise to kind of really see what Daniel does before it gets back around to him. We saw Keaton put out a small C bet, and then Charlie put in a small raise. Keaton oh, kind of man. holding uh, one of the worst hands. But this is so for tough Charlie for to against. with Charlie because he's out of position, you know. So it's like and now five of hearts on the turn. So Charlie makes it straight. <laughs> Just decides to rip it here with three hearts That's on board. That's a really good card. Even if it wasn't, you know, obviously the card to give him the straight the five. He knows that there are a lot of good turn cards to get him to fold because I feel like he thinks by him just calling, he's just capped at like top pair kind of hands, one pair kind of holdings. He also may not have expected Keaton to be opening a 10-9 type hand. Thinks he's maybe got Jack-10, Queen-10 that he's C-betting more often. Now I got a question maybe for you. Maybe try to push him off some of those straight draws or charge him for him. If Daniel sees the turn and it starts, <laughs> keep in mind he has the 10 of hearts, right? Not only the 10 of hearts. Not a big enough heart. No. The king was a heart, maybe. But it's Daniel, so I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to try yeah. to figure out Daniel. <laughs> He's the wild card, man. He's the wild card. You just never really know with him. Nice hand there from yeah. Charlie, though. Nice I, think, hand, I, think nice I think you were right. A lot of turn cards allow Charlie to bet, push Keaton off of whatever he's holding. If he thinks he has a straight draw, he knows he could take it down. If he thinks he has a real hand, it almost always is going to be like an over pair to that board. Yep. You never want to be facing an all-in with just one pair. No, not for your tournament life, right? There's a lot of dollars on the line. Um, so Charlie could get there and win. He could try to bluff and win. Always nice to have options. Always nice to have options. Pablo here about thinking about it. Oh, yeah, Pablo. I mean, he loves it, man. He's a he's this is gamble, baby. And James, the Irishman, just chipped up to having what might be second in chips at this table. Maybe third. That's why Look I think, at him. I think Look he's at Pablo. Did you hear what he just said? Playing tight. tight. He's thinking about three betting for sure. Yeah, but he like he has fifty nine big blinds. Like, like put a one. sock on it, man. Just uh, relax. Just relax. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> just, just calm down. You don't need to open every hand. You don't need to see every flop. Just relax. Just chill out. Let's see Daniel put out the C bet here. Actually, Daniel let it go. James I don't know about him Daniel showing folding the eights. as much as he's showing, right? He's giving especially players like James information. Yeah, way too much info. Yeah. But also, I mean, if you're folding a second pair there and showing everybody you're folding second pair there, <laughs> you got to at least call the flop C-bet for sure. But it's each their own. So going back to Pablo, possibly three-betting there. I mean, that's those are the type of guys you want to start three-betting light. The guys are sitting second or third in chips. Mm -hmm. You're sitting first. You can pressure them. They might want to see a short stack or two bust out. I mean, two people bust out. You're taking home 10k. Nothing wrong with that. You don't want to. You don't want to slip and fall. All right, Daniel's not limping. He's raising it up this time. So Daniel raised it up from the button with the king ten suited. <coughs> Nicky folded the small and it's over. James the Irishman in the big. <laughs> He's got a very defendable hand. Ace seven suited. So we're gonna see him put in the call. So heads up we go. It's king Jack eight. So Daniel flops top pair. James with just backdoor club draw. Daniel fires out a huge C bet. James lets it go. And that is going to do it. We see Daniel take it down. Uh, Frank asking, is this the complete final table or others remaining? This is, in fact, the final table. We're down to seven players left out of the 961 that started. All buying for 67,000 up top for first place. A $400 buy in event. Oh boy, just like that, everybody's chip stacks took a cut. Blinds are now up, blinds are now 60,000 in the small blind and 120,000 in the big blind with a $120,000 big blind. That'll go in effect last hand. This hand 
started right before the announcement, so Boy. it's good news for your, your your Andre fans out there as he snuck in the uh, <laughs> big blind right before the blinds went up. Yeah, that's going to be good for him. Every little bit helps, especially in these things, shallow stacks. So we're going to see Pablo open it up with a king seven of hearts. Feels shorter stacked, not something he'd be doing, giving his chip stack. He can do this. Open a little bit lighter, keeps stealing them away. And looks like Andre going to be the only caller. So Andre and Pablo going heads up, both with a suited king. Little clubs for his hearts. Pablo connects a little bit better as he hits a seven. It came down queen, 10 seven. So bottom pair for Pablo. We're going to see him bet out after Andre checks. Andre's got to let it go. Uh, Frank, I don't, Mike, is there ever going to be like a, a standings like report for players as far as where they got eliminated? I don't believe we have any sort of live uh, updates on this event. I know some of the bigger events like WPTs and things, you'll see some more of that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we have anything that gets posted until this event wraps up. Usually it is pretty quick though after the event ends. So, you know, give it a little bit of time after this stream ends. I'm sure it'll be up there. There you go. You win it. Oh, I'm gonna we all I had to finish fifth. I, I was firing shells at, at least, <laughs> no, by, at least by, uh, by watching the stream, you know that he didn't win, so you can avoid the awkward question of did you win. I guess Daniel made that mistake before. <laughs> I don't know who asked, but the question of how many bullets did everybody respectively fire came up. And James goes, I got to finish fifth to break even. I was, he said I was popping shells everywhere. I'm like, oh my God. Fifth? That's what he said. That's what he said. I got a little further to go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I appreciate his transparency. I hope it's, I hope it's real. Hey, like I said, I, I appreciate his transparency. I know that's like a, a touchy question to ask because, you know, money's involved, but he candidly told everybody, like, hey, if I don't finish fifth, like, I break even if I finish fifth, so that's good. Probably makes a little bit of money, I think just is what he said. A few more places to go. I mean, those are tournaments, right? Like, that's just how tournaments go, man. You know, first bullet, you're like, man, I ran kings and the aces. Second bullet, you're like, man, it's set over set. By the 18th bullet, you might get there. You never really know. <laughs> I've heard, the, I've heard the 18th bullet is the lucky one. That's what they tell. That's what I've heard, yeah. I mean, if you, you get, to, you get to the 18th, boy, I'm telling you, I don't even want to know what you look like at that point. One bullet wonders. I like that. Hey, like I said, that's that's a pretty transparent response, though. The chat will take with it and run with it, or take it and run with it, but... Hey, at least he's telling the truth. Brandon Bad Bradbury says, uh, would have loved to make this final table. Would have been a good one. Great job, guys. I think that might be BKB. BKB, if that is you, I owe you a steak. <laughs> I do. I told him if he won the nightly tournament, I'd, uh, I'd give him a steak. Probably make it myself, though. <laughs> nice little ribeye, a little compound butter, a little thyme, garlic. Come on, man. You, come on. You know what's going on. I get down. You've never made me a steak. How would I know what's going Listen, on? Listen, they call me Mario Batali out here. Little Emerald guy. I've never heard anybody call you that. <laughs> You'd be right. I was lying. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, James the Irishman, though. He's got to build King Nine offsuit. He did elect to uh, put on the squeeze earlier, if you remember. So he just lets it go this time. Really varying, really varying his play so far. It is him. <laughs> it is. <laughs> of course, man. I got you, BKB. I'm a man of my word. You better believe it's on the way. <clears throat> Just Keaton raise it up with the queen five out of the small blind. A little blind versus blind action. Pablo looks down at a pretty trashy E tray. So think about it a little bit. Maybe mixing it in. Like you know. He's, he knows he's folding, but he's trying to make it. Look like he's thinking about it, just like he would think about whether he wants to raise I just, what he wants to raise it to. I wanted to, I, I wanted to fire up Pablo, but I'm not gonna do it. You can't. Be. It's I'm gonna let him. If live. you're gonna think that long on some things, you gotta think that long on other things. I feel That's like, like a he, real, real old stuff. I feel Before like your time, Adonis. I feel like he's really playing to the lights right now. 
Like, why you got to put your glasses down every time you get in the hand? And you know you're going to fold and you're going to put your glasses down. I know that you're too young to know who uh, Jesus Ferguson even is, probably. But I don't know who that is. Exactly. <laughs> that was like one of his first lessons, that he always counted to six before he acted in his head. But this is so crazy, That way he man. always acted at the same speed. I'm going to need Pablo to just, hey, man, I understand you're under the lights. Do your thing and all, but yeah, you don't need to be out of tank with eight tray offsuit. Look at him. I love Pablo. Though. He didn't tank. He just didn't snap, react. He's so funny. Nah, Ken, Ken man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pablo Helmuth. I ain't want to say nothing. If he blows up, maybe. I mean, he's just so funny. Like, I'm watching him. You know, arms folded. Look at him. Arms folded, looking into the camera. Oh, look at that. Look at the. You see the glasses? He Come heard, on, he man. Heard you. Meanwhile, we got an actual hand here. It's Nikki. Very quiet. I was called the assassin by somebody earlier because he was so quiet. Who? Raised it up, and Charlie puts in the call. From the big blind, Charlie had kind of both options on the table of call or raise. Again, takes a low variance route, just calls. Pop a jack 10 9. Charlie's going to check it over. Under pair of the board with a gut shot straight draw. Nikki with the pair of nines. Just bottom pair on board, just going to check it back. Both players pretty happy to maybe just get to showdown for cheap with their pair. Continues to check on the turn and off to the river tray. Easily see this one continue to check, check. Good check, <coughs> check, check back from Charlie. Man, both players kind of want to get to show down for free with their hand. I mean, they both yeah. have a pair. Could easily be best. Both players have been pretty coy so far. That's I think that's the first hand we've seen Nikki really play. Yeah, Trevor Sergeant, you know what? Now that you mention that, we'll go ahead and put him on the screen. Okay, so as far as stack sizes, this is what everybody's working with. All right, you got my main man, Mr. TV star Pablo. Is at the top of the board, 50 big blinds, 6 million in chips, and our resident favorite, Andre, has just 7 big blinds and a dream. But all it takes is a chip in the chair, so let's see where he ends up. Everybody else is kind of in the middle. Uh, 4 million, 4 million there, 3, 2, and 1 uh, for the respective players on the final table. So Pretty we'll, tight there in the middle. Yeah, real tight in the middle. So uh, Dre, 7 big blinds, we're hoping. I mean, I know you guys are probably praying, and, and let's hope he can bring it home. I just cannot engage in these comments. Man. Well, there is the Andre all in. Looks down at an ace from mid-late position. Pretty easy open shove. A hand that you almost don't want to get called with. You're hoping to just take the take the blinds, chip up a little bit. This is the Tostitos all-in moment. You're going to get called. Daniel the called him off last time with uh, Jack 10 against 10, so... And he does put in the call this time with King Jack. So all right, close your eyes, turn around. Get those... Get those, you know, LFGs up in the chat again. They're going to need it. Basically a coin flip here. are going to need Dre's ace high to hold. And uh, that works too. Oh. Swapping the straight for Andre. Just Damn. Got him. Got him. Oh, my Lord Jesus. He was drawing dead on the flop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was some, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, he could have he could have ran out of chop. Boom. Oh, my. Boom. Oh, my Lord Jesus. Look at Daniel. Daniel's like, I mean, he's, that was rash easy. he's like rationalizing the call. He's like, I mean, come on. The guy was short stacked. I kind of had to call there. My hands were tied. My hands it was were a tied. slam dunk shove. It was a slam dunk shove. You, you go all in with that hand all day in that position. It was easy shove and obviously easy on the flop. <laughs> I mean, flop. He flopped the wheel and flopped him dead. Easy game. <laughs> Just get it all in the flop. <laughs> Look at Daniel's face. <laughs> He almost feels guilty that it was that easy. He is like, so stuck. I wish I had control of this screen so I could just in. zoom in on him like no, the crying day. cobra. Of course. I call you. Call everyone. Call. I'm talking about the, the one time. Who's there one time? And you can, I, I had one eight bigs. If I had three million, I'm going to go. I had four million. You know? I had eight bigs. They're all trying to make it feel good. What am I going to do? Uh, go on. Bleed, bleed more? Like, I have to get it in eventually. No issues. Uh, don't argue with him, Andre. He did the right thing. It was slam dunk, easy shove. <laughs> Sub Ted Big Blinds, hijack, ace four. I don't care what method you use to look it up. That was automatic shove. Yeah. I don't know what this energy is that Andre is getting, but it is working and it is manifesting in the right places. Ace four, and you flop away. <laughs> Zero, zero sweat to the scratch. You are guaranteed didn't a double think, up. Didn't even have to think. What do I need? Oh, I don't, I don't need anything. 
He's a kid. <laughs> I don't. I just need you to put the other two cards. I'll take down. I just need you to count his my all in and give me the same amount of that guy's chips. So Dre's gonna go from seven big blinds, and if I can do math, which I can at about a fifth grade level. He is going to now have about 14 to 15 big blinds and be in a better spot. Still kind of on life support. Money. Money's on 15.5. <laughs> Money's always good. And your money probably will be right. So, sudden life for Andre. 15 big blinds. Lots of room to work with. He's a double up from all those stacks that we saw, you know, second through six just a little bit ago. Ken, they were all in that 25 to 30. 1,000% Ken. 1,000%. Here we're gonna see Charlie opening up with 10-9. So it's gonna get around to James the Irishman. Mm. A6 offsuit. We haven't seen Charlie play two out of line either. Might see James let it go. Could see him defend with an ace. Does let it go. And this is only event one of our run good series. Keep in mind we're gonna we have a few more final tables to do. Um, yeah, we're not leaving. We're not leaving. Uh, we are going to do our ladies only tournament, which is tomorrow. And that will be streamed. Uh, our Run Good Ambassador Bounty Tournament, which will you will see Mike. You'll, here you'll again. hear Mike. You won't see him. Well, if we put the camera up, we could see you as well. <laughs> I got the, I got the, I got the face for radio, I think. So we'll, we'll stick with this. I think you're, this I think is rough I'm enough. I think you're a handsome guy. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, that's tight. That's tight. So <laughs> got him. That's the soundboard you hit. Oh. <laughs> um, so we'll do that. We will we will live stream the Ambassador Tournament the 19th. That's event number six. Tuesday. And then the next live stream will be the main event. And that final table will take place March 24th. Let me know which one you want to know. You'll tell me the truth. Obviously, I believe there's a cash game or two in between as well. In case that's more your speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have some cash right. games in between as well. Guys, you can always jump on our website, bestbetjacks.com. Check out tournament schedules, promo schedules, live stream schedules, pictures of Adonis. You ain't gonna find those. Maybe. If they search hard enough, they might. No, you never find those. You gotta search deep <laughs> and dark into the interwebs. Uh, but I will put links to both of those in the chat if you guys want to maybe get on a live stream or maybe be thinking about uh, driving down for a tournament. We have pretty much everything you could, you could want here at Best Bet Jack. I don't like folding my blinds to a single raise. Clear water. Well, that's close to me. Clear water. Talking about clear water here. Just drove back from there this morning. We also, we also like to call it Champa Bay. <laughs> Cups yeah, we do appreciate it. everybody's been hanging out, almost, chilling almost. with us on this live stream, watching this final table. Been a lot of fun seeing you guys root your players on. Not much better, not much better things to do on a Sunday night than hang out, watching some guys play for a pretty sizable chunk of change. Yeah, and they're good. You know, they're all good people, man. Uh, even the guys I haven't met, everybody's everybody's cool. Everybody's nice. Uh, I've had fun. Uh, I've had fun walking on the outer tables, meeting everybody, uh, being able to interact with all the players. Hearing Daniel needle Pablo. <laughs> yeah, because, man, I love Pablo, so I'm going to let him live. Because I don't know what he's doing. But, you know, I know what Nicky's doing. He's opening up with an ace. Great position raise here. He's just been pretty quiet. Oh, there's Keaton. It's a real hand. He's going to have to put in the call. Go set mining. Keaton obviously trying to spike a six. Will make his decision making a lot easier if he does. Or that. Or, or that. Five trade deuce flops. Suddenly Keaton's sixes are an overpair to this board. And a four would be, you know, and four, four is obviously the action. Nikki with a straight draw of his own. Looking for that same four as Adonis was just saying. Nikki also sitting there with that ace of spades. Gives him some options to continue bluffing on the turn should another spade come out. Oh, oh my lord, Jesus. Four. Oh my god. Oh my lord, look at it. Oh, wow. Do you see it? Do you see it? I see it. And it goes check, check, so neither uh. This is going to get Keaton paid. Yeah, it is. <coughs> see what Keaton wants to do here. He could go for value with a smaller bet. He could just go big. He's going value bet. Doesn't think Nikki has a straight. Oh, my Lord. There it is. See, Look at him. If Keaton thought Nikki had an ace, he would have probably gone bigger. That's nasty. Yeah. That's nasty. Yes, it is. Damn. 
Well, that was a money car. That means Keaton's chipping up. Suddenly, there's no micro stacks out there. We saw Andre mm -hmm. get a big double up. Now mm -hmm. Keaton just dragged a nice size pot. He was at about 14, 15 bigs. He just yeah. played the big blind. And this is it. Nobody sub 10. There's no shorties that are on imminent depth. So. <laughs> Daniel really, really wants Pablo. Yeah. He's calling him out. Yeah, it's hard to say Pablo Soto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as Manuel points out, Nicky lost him, and he sure did. I thought Nicky was going to fire on that turn. You know, he raised pre-flop, C-bet flop, hits it on the turn with the spade redraw. I thought he was going to bet again. I thought he was going to go bet, shove. A lot of options there. Nicky back at it again. This time King-Queen suited raises it up. And... James announces it. Three bet with the ace queen. 560 is going to be the price. Let's see if Nikki can lose them in on this hand. So like getting a little over three to one on a call. Let's see Nikki put it in. How do you feel about that call there with King Queen? I mean, it was only 300 to call with 11k and 1.1 million. I mean, it's Lord Jesus. Well, man, this, these now, all these flops are just so up. dynamic. I'm here. I am thinking, now, man. What's good about this for Nikki is it's such he's got such a lock on it. He can slow play it. It's a rainbow board, so there's no flush draws available right now. There's not a second Broadway board with the two kings. I mean, I just really. I mean, I. I mean, such a good flop for Nikki's hand. I just never thought that would have... Never thought I'd see two kings on the flop. So we see James continue with a very small C-bet, which makes a lot of sense in the spot. It's a very way ahead, way behind kind of a board. He's trying to rep the king himself. But and Nikki, it's just a really easy hand to play for Nikki. Set him up. Yep, Nikki checks it over again. James just going to check it back. Brick four on the river. Now, Nikki's just going to rip it, praying that James has something like King Jack, King Ten, or maybe a pocket pair like pocket tens, pocket jacks. It just what, gets put in a tough spot. What bluffs could Nikki have here? James might be thinking. I mean, I don't, not much. Not much, right? Just not much. But it was also uh, less than a pot size shove. And if you know you're getting your bet size called with whatever the size is, you might as well go for the most. That's true. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question, Michael. But I don't know if there's any regulations like regarding that. I don't. I know outside like of the event. yeah, outside of the main event. <laughs> I just don't know if you can do that. Sure like you I can. It's like sure, sure you can. Just wheel it out like, like in one dollar bills. I don't like, know. Me personally, I mean, I understand we are in a very pro first of all, we are in a very protected establishment. We have security that surround the premises at all times inside. But I don't know if I would be comfortable wheeling out three hundred thousand dollars really? across that floor. I mean, I know I would be okay, <laughs> but I don't even think I would need to wheel it. I think it would be okay. Probably just put it underneath my arms. I will say I know that one of the big problems with doing that would be uh, you have to count out the cash when the person wins it. So you'd have to like count it out. Uh, where yeah. when you pay it by paying it out in chips, it's just much faster to count it out yeah, on yeah. camera. That's true. That's true. But yeah, it's gonna. I feel like you think the size of the dollar when you said wheeled out. I feel like you thought the size of dollars was a lot larger than they are. Like, <laughs> like, like have you ever seen a ten k stack? It's not a, exactly not like big. huge. Yeah. Here I am thinking like made of <laughs> ten million dollars. <laughs> You're right. You're actually right. Here we are with a pretty interesting spot as James opened it up and now Pablo mm. puts in the three bet. Mm. So I was saying James has that kind of a stack that Pablo might want to push he around. But he doesn't need to do this. Doesn't need to. King Queen's a very three bettable hand because you're blocking the pocket kings and pocket queens so much. You're blocking ace king. You're blocking ace queen. I mean, you just don't need to do this. You, you're the big stack at the table, man. You need to just chill out. Uh -huh. Get you some popcorn. Put your feet up. I think it's the kind of chip stack you would like to three bet. Would have liked to see it earlier when all those short stacks were still in, because then James would have to play a little bit more tighter to the vest. Yeah. But given the fact that they all just doubled up, I mean. What's up, coach? It's not as much pressure, but it works. You see? James lets go of the ace jack, and Pablo gets to drag it in. Yeah, he loves it. He lives for this. Pablo lives for it. This is his moment. This is it. So he's going to get chips or die trying. 
I mean, the way he, the way he plays it sometimes, he definitely puts his life on the line. His tournament life. I'll tell you that. But he's the big stack at the table. It's everybody's worst nightmare, man. I mean, he, he could he could decide to apply pressure whenever he wants. And now, not only is is the decision up to you, but a decision for your tournament life. Because he's he's got such an overwhelming chip lead. <clears throat> Action start on Nikki with the King 10. He's going to open it up. Nice min click. Made it 240. Big blind 120. Let's see some people let go of some hands. Including an ace and a Keaton. He's going to get a round to the blinds. Charlie with a very playable King Queen suited himself. Let's see what he wants to go. Mm. This is all Pablo. Three bet King Queen out of the small blind. If they, let's see, let's see. Maybe Charlie's just gonna call. Nikki did open under the gun rather than like a later position. Again, we haven't seen Nikki get out of line. Charlie hasn't seen Nikki get out of line. Two blue variants approach when the call and it invited Daniel to come along with Jack Nine. Three ways to five trade deuce. Nobody with a pair. Daniel. Fires at it. 500,000. That's going to get it done. Daniel, the wild card. He's going to show it. Does. He's going to show the table jack high. Did he? Shows the he table jack the high. Line, <laughs> <laughs> Shows a bluff, calls out Pablo. <laughs> That's what he does. Yo, he really got it out for Pablo, man. <laughs> and Pablo wasn't even in the hand. <laughs> He's like, yo, that was for you, Pablo. So yeah, after that shakeup, let's see how everybody's sitting down. It looks like, well, obviously Pablo's still far and away. Everybody's still so clumped. Look, Daniel, 31 bigs, all the way down to Keaton's 23. Andre, still the shorty with 13. 13 much better than the 7 or 8 that he had earlier, though. Just needs to wake up with one hand. That's it. That's all it takes. I mean, if he doubles up, he's right there in the mix of it. It's all second chips with 31 blinds. One double puts him right nearby. Going folding over to the button. <laughs> All right, Daniel. After saying Nikki's his best friend, decides to limp in. Nikki gonna check it back. He is a wild guy. <laughs> he is a wild guy. <laughs> Clock came ace, ace ten. Daniel checks his king high over. Nikki checks it back and hits a jack on the turn. Does Nikki? So he's not checking now. <laughs> Bounces a bet, and somehow Daniel has the chips in faster. So off we go to the nine on the river. Nikki's hand stays best. Daniel checks it over. Let's see if Nikki wants to go for some thin value. He does. Goes very small, praying to get looked up light. Oh, wow, Daniel. Firing a big raise. You go it. You leaving? So I think he's gonna have to replay the action in his head. Does he think Daniel ever calls pre-flop with an ace? He doesn't. Daniel been putting his hand in the cookie jar, man. Yeah, look Picks. at you. Uh, look at say, you. I think I think Nikki was as I was saying it. I think Nikki got there to that same thought of would Daniel limp in pre-flop with an ace? Uh, he well, probably raises. Well, so I wouldn't say a flaw, but rather, um, I guess the one thing about Daniel that's that's something he might want to hold on to it and not let him not not let himself spiral out of control because he makes those kind of moves and then gets like upset with himself right like i didn't have to raise there you really didn't have to <laughs> and so now you don't want to let that tilt set into the point where now you're making even more bad decisions. very very fast call by nikki very he picked it off call. quick well now everybody's kind of realizing you know his game and, and what he's about now it's up to daniel to try to adapt he says well Daniel doesn't limp pre with an ace. He doesn't just keep checking every street with an ace. I mean, Will Simpson, you were right. He just funded Nikki. He funded Nikki there. He <laughs> funded Dre. He funded Nikki. See Andre having to fold ace nine offsuit on the gun. He is handcuffed by that shorter stack. Plus, I mean, now you see Daniel firing away. You don't want to. 
step out too late against the Maniacs. Maybe you think he's fired up, maybe a little tilty like you said. He has trouble letting it go, maybe. Looks pretty visually disgusted after the hand. Maybe he is having trouble letting it go. I actually saw him limp in here with 6-5 offsuit. Go off to a queen 6-4 flop. Everybody checks it. A deuce of spades turn. Continues to check through. Daniel with the best hand right now. Has to fade a lot. Well, board pairing queen's good for it. Daniel's six is best. Mary, you're beautiful. But in the meantime, Nikki going to bluff at it. See you tomorrow. It's a ladies' event tomorrow. Mary's going to be in it. I know. I, I, Nick, this time, Nikki got his hand caught in the cookie jar. Daniel, the recipient of the chips. <laughs> They're trading bluffs back and forth. I had to try. I know, but you <laughs> no, you didn't. Uh, who told you that lie? <laughs> you didn't have to do anything. I had to try. You actually could have just checked. Don't start taking Don't start taking pages out of Daniel's he book. Couldn't, <laughs> couldn't win with 10 high. He didn't bluff. You said it. You said it. You said it. You said it. <laughs> okay. We're going to see Andre in the big blind. Being the short stack. <laughs> See if he can wake up with a hand in the big. I'm like a yo-yo, you know the yo-yo? <laughs> You're like the stock market, man. I'm going to go back tomorrow to my old job, though. You're going to the stock market. I'm going back to my old job tomorrow. Can you ask me which one? I'm going back to my old job tomorrow. Can you ask me which one? Give me a second, buddy. I just, I just want to get to this punchline. I just want to listen to Daniel Which and one? Pablo interact all night. <laughs> <laughs> you got me, bro. <laughs> Daniel telling jokes while putting in the call. Just limped in with a nine-seven suit. Oh, God. Well, allows Andre to check out of the big blind. See a free flop. He's got king seven. So best hand right now at the king high. Stays best hand on queen seven six. They both flop that pair of sevens, but Andre's kicker is better. And should continue to play through this hand. It's going to be hard to get counterfeited. So if he can fade a nine or backdoor straight, you could see Andre pick up some chips here. We saw Daniel throw out a small bet. Andre call on the flop. Turn's going to go check, check. Oh, brutality. Nine on the river. Oh, my lord. Oof. That hurt. Yeah, river nine. Just, gonna send that pot Daniel's way. I really thought he was gonna fade everything there. Yeah, I come back like the gang. So rough for Andre there. Fortunate not to lose any more chips than he did, at least, but thought for sure that pot was going over to him. Would have given him some much needed life. Would have pumped him over 15 bigs. Instead, he stuck down at 10. <laughs> 120 to go. Pablo let go of some garbage front of the gun. Charlie going to fold here. I believe Daniel announced call. So another limp in from him with King-10 suited this time. You just never know what you're going to get with him. And now, again, Big Blind gets to check his option. This time it's Keaton who gets to check. King-10 versus King-4. Flop 9-9 nine, nine, tray, rainbow board. Action goes check-check to a queen on the turn. So like check-check again. King-high. King-high. Daniel's king high. It's going to be better because the 10 is going to play. So back to back pots getting shipped over to Daniel. Actually, three pots in a row getting shipped to Daniel. Wow. He lost the big bluff and then immediately got it all back. So no time to see if the tilt set in as he just kept winning all the pots anyway. Nothing puts you off tilt like uh, scooping three pots in a row. I'm telling you. You're just like, come on, man. When he come back? When we get back from break. When he come back? Pablo! Daniel, on the break, we'll give you the, the microphone. Okay, guys. We'll be on now at 10 minute break. If you are not involved in this hand, you are on 10 minutes. 
we come back, back, our blinds will increase. We will be at 80,160 and 160,000. Oh, 240 is the best. Right, so as you heard, after this hand, players will be taking a short 10-minute break. Meanwhile, Nikki got to raise it up. Keaton put in a three bet with King Queen. Seen a lot of interesting spots with King Queen today. May work yet again as Nikki's been playing snug. Keaton's been playing snug. Neither one of these players have gotten out of line, but Nikki does put in the call. So with everybody kind of leaving the table, they might miss out on a big pot here. There's 1.5 million in the middle. Comes down ace high, so Nikki with the best hand. Keaton out of position. Just over a pot size chip stack behind. Let's see what he wants to do. Small C bet. Three at 50 the price. About 1.5 million in the middle. I see Nikki put in the call. So does Keaton shut it down or does he continue on this turn when it comes to seven of hearts? Pretty crazy spot brewing up here. Looks like Keaton's going to keep firing. He's telling the story. He's saying I have ace king or ace queen and I know you don't. It's out 600,000. A little over one third of his chip stack goes into the middle. Looks pretty strong, but Nikki stays a non believer, puts in the call. Look at this massive pot brewed up while everybody's away from the game, and it comes down Trey of Spades on the river. I mean, he's just got to check, Keaton, right? Yeah, Keaton he's has to wave the white flag. Nikki going nowhere. Oh, my God. That's what the bet on the turn. Is. Just uh, And you see Keaton does a little shrug there, doesn't Yeah, just a bad spot to do it. I mean, I, I could understand what he was trying to do. I but. think that was more he didn't expect Nikki to stick around with ace, jack, ace, ten type hands. He thought they would, he would get away from those. Damn. So All right, big well, pot. Big pot just got shipped. I mean, with that, we're going to go to break for, I believe they're on a 10-minute break, 15-minute break. And and then we'll be right back, uh, guys. Back at you in less than 10. Less than 10 minutes. We'll be right back, okay? If you can see it off to the side real quick, that'd be great.
back in action here. Whoa, that sounds scratchy. Well, you know what they say. Get rich or die getting scratchy. Get rich or die scratching, I should say. <laughs> Whew. So we are back in action here, underway. Final seven players still remain. They took a 10-minute break. We took the break along with them. We chugged some Red Bulls. We did some shots. We're ready to go back at it. At least I am. How about you, Adonis? I almost had a shot pun. Almost. Adonis. I know. It's not good. That's why I tucked it away. <laughs> he said Adonis. Adonis. <laughs> Bad Adonis. But we are back. We are definitely back. Um, and yeah. we're back. We're better than ever. Just in case anybody's under a rock and can't see the YouTube chat, the Get Rich or Die Scratching references and reference to Andre there in the two seat and his YouTube following, hanging out, watching along. Been a, been a good supported cast. Yeah, he's been short. He's been on live support. But any time that it mattered and he was all in, he has gotten through and he has doubled up and he is still alive. Now, you might ask, what are they playing for? And I can tell you, or rather show you, exactly what they are. Uh, seventh place, next person out will be taking home $7,510. But what everybody has their eyes on is that $67,805 and the coveted title of Event 1 of the Run Good Series Tournament Champion. And Run Good Champion does get to take home a nice championship ring in addition to the trophy oh, that we do right. for all of us. The Run Good's beautiful because it's a double dip. They actually provide circuit rings for all of their events at each stop. They look nice. They do look nice. And, uh, we always give away a trophy for every event we do. So winner here gets the 67K plus one of each trophy and ring. Having a couple, couple events coming the rest of the week. This is the opener. Seven players remain out of the 961 that started. Across six flights the last three days. and Play resumed today at 12. So these guys have been at it for nine and a half hours already. Yeah, these guys have been at it for a minute. They don't seem sleepy at all, though. I'm sure the juices are flowing. Playing for that sizable amount of change up top. But again, Andre, the short stack. And here it comes all in. Oh, jack Andre's 8 suited. All in with jack 8 suited. Yep, he's... You know, trying to get some chips. You accumulate them by stealing the blinds. He gets the shove through, and he can chip up, get more ammunition for later. So let's see if he faces any pushback. As you see, Pablo lay down ace four offsuit. Oh, Oof. Lord. So we're going to see a call out of Charlie here. Yeah, I mean, it's almost a guaranteed call out of Charlie. Uh, as far as why Andre shoved there with jack eight, well, I don't really want to think about that too much. Let's just think about the jack or eight that's going to come on the flop. Let's, let's try to keep him in. Charlie's got plenty. Charlie so the, the why is that he has enough chips that you are going to get some pretty big folds, like Pablo folding ace four. You see Nikki fold ace deuce. It's just, oh, boy. Here we Charlie go. just happened to wake up with a monster. Here we go. But even when he puts in the call, Andre's still 40%. Jack eight suited against ace king. Get, the t get all the emojis out in chat. We're going to need to see a jack or an eight. So we go off to a seven high flop. Jack oh, on the turn for we Andre. Go. Good job. Ooh, Jack on the river. Wow. So he hit it not once but twice. Huge double for Andre. Man, look at that. And a huge blow to Charlie now. They pretty much flip-flop positions. Now, now Charlie's, Charlie's going to become sport. the short stack. He still has 12 bigs. And again, Charlie, a very accomplished season player. Taking down a few tournaments. He's probably pretty well versed in how to navigate this chip stack. Won't go away without a fight. But in the meantime... Andre gaining some life. Feels like a turbo, boys. Feels like a turbo. He said gaining? it feels like a turbo. I mean, for him, every hand is a turbo. Like, you're like, all in or fold. He's so short, but he keeps chipping up, so. A chip up, he does, and he'll be right back at it under the gun. This time, uh, easy decision. Just going to go ahead and let go of the queen four. So, boom. All the Andre fans, a little, a little sigh of relief. Getting a little pumped up again. I love it. I love seeing the chat blow up. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you know it's clear who, everybody, who everybody's loving in the chat. So seeing him do well. Oh, my gosh. Ace King again for Charlie. Well, you can't deviate, right? Like I think the biggest thing to take away is when you play your game, when you run into an unfortunate spot, you ha I know it's easier said than done, but you got to take it on the chin and keep rolling. Okay? Poker is not a game where you're going to win 100% of the time. It's the only game I know where you can do everything correctly and still lose. So, Charlie's been there plenty of times. I know he's not going to like it, but you just got to take your licks, man, and keep rolling. You're still in the tournament, and you still got chips. 
We did see Charlie just limp in with that Ace King. He was probably hoping to see somebody bump it up and then back jam. So now we went four ways in a limped pot. 9-6 Trey. Action's going to check around the flop to a four of hearts on the turn. So Daniel open-ended and flush draw on the turn. Electing not to stab at it when he checks with his button. He makes it straight, though. Yeah, and hits the straight on the end rail. Really thought Daniel might fire about there, a bet there on the turn. And Carson says he doesn't like the flat here at all. Hard to disagree with you. I think Charlie was just kind of going for it all. Daniel behind him, hoping he would raise it up. But instead, Daniel going to fire out the river here. It was full pot when it checks around to him. Actually, see James put in the call with the pair of sixes trying to pick off a bluff. Daniel's oh, going to chip up nicely. And that's going to put James a short stack, too, at nine big blinds. Suddenly, you got James at nine, Charlie at ten. Got some short stacks emerging. Going to be see, going to be fun to see how that plays into things. Two different short stacks on the table now. I would imagine somebody like Pablo is going to try to push around the medium stacks with that in play. Yeah, whoever wanted the payouts, I got them for you. Okay, that's what so I'm gonna be. Of, gonna be really interesting to see them here. Is I'm a man of the seven people. players left? So if two of those short stacks get knocked out, you jump up from seven point five to ten point three. Mm. Basically, a three k pay jump if you're a middling stack. You know, you that's might not, not want to step out if uh, there's two shorties in the field. That's not bad at but all. Talking about stepping out, Daniel will uh, pretty much always step out. He's gonna put in the limp here with the eight six suited. He has just been continuing to play his game regardless of the situation, I would say. Well, now we're going to see James rip it. 10-7 suited from the small blind. How you feel? I think he's going to get it through. I mean, Andre, Queen, Trey facing all in. Pretty easy fold. Daniel, after limping in, are you going to do calling all in with 8 high? I don't think so. Daniel's asking for a count. Don't think it's going to matter. It's a pretty... Pretty sizable amount here. 1.5 million. Daniel with 5.5 million. This is just called wasting time. Yeah. No, we've seen him put in some loose calls before. It's called waste. Don't time. think it's fake. Think he's uh, you know, maybe actually thinking about it. I'm not putting anything past this guy. I'm not crazy. Inevitably, he does let it go, and James is going to chip up nicely. Obviously, what he was hoping to have happen there. Both opponents letting it go, picking up some much-needed life in the form of three or four more big blinds. I wonder if uh, Daniel will start taking the hint that he shouldn't be limping in as much. Gets taken advantage of if he does. Or... He won't pick up on any hints, and he'll just start yelling at Pablo again. We can see it happen. So Pablo with ace-queen gets to open it up from under the gun. Again, Pablo the big stack. One of the bigger stacks at the table. I believe Nikki's actually the big stack after that massive pot we saw right before break. But Pablo got to open it up. Daniel's going to make a comment about it. He always does as always. he picks up his uh, three-hour-old fried rice. He's picking up clumps of rice at, at this point. Pretty sure he's supposed to eat it when it comes out. But hey, teach his own. It's nourishment for his body so he can continue to be the character that he is. Need that nourishment. I believe Pablo is still has a uh, quite the lead in so terms pull, of chips. Let's pull it up. I want to see, especially Nikki's chip stack, if he took over oh, the lead or not. Uh, I can tell you. I know they're in a hand, so I won't put the graphic up I'm on the screen. I'm going to have to wait until after this hand. But Pablo meantime, has 5.9 million. Nikki has 5.4 million. In the meantime, it folds over to Andre. He's going to open it up from the button, trying to steal this one. Raise him with eight deuce. Gets through Keaton. I don't think it's going to get through Pablo's King 10. Could easily see Pablo put in the call. 
So we're seeing Andre trying to chip up. He's not trying to just milk his short stack, trying to steal blinds here. We do see Pablo put in the call. If Andre can catch a favorable flop, he might be able to continue getting this bluff through. As Pablo is going to tread pretty lightly. But that's not a good flop at all as it comes king 9-6. Pablo flops top pair. Checks over to Andre. Assembling a C-bet. Does go small, 250000 to about one million, so quarter pot. Something he would do with his king queens, king jacked, type hands. So Pablo just gonna put in the call. Now turn, tray of diamonds, complete brick. Oh boy. Looks like Andre here is, I mean, hopefully he can find a way to just kind of give up on the hand. He's either going to give up or go big. If he thinks Pablo has some sort of draw on that flop, you know, two spades on board and a lot of straight draws oh, available. Oh, it's his favorite hand? Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, Jesus. So I didn't then. know that part. I say especially given the fact Pablo more likely oh, to have straight or flush yeah. draws than a king. You could continue to tell your story that you have a king. Now, finding out it's his favorite hand might get him in trouble. Hopefully he avoids disaster, though. He does bet 400k. Pablo going to put in the call. So we're hoping Andre shuts it down on the river. Otherwise, I mean, he's got. I mean, he's got eight bigs, man. A nine of diamonds pairs the board. Pablo checks it again. Oh, Lord. They went Jesus. all in and call. Andre That's didn't it. shut it down. Went That's for it. it with his favorite hand, and Pablo picks it off. That is it. That's going to do it for Andre. He has been Oof. eliminated. He will be Oof. taking home, if we take a second to look at yeah. it, he's going to be taking home $7,510. Uh, I didn't know it was his favorite hand, but as we can see, uh, he's, it a lot more. He's, he's willing to go to the end. But uh, GG's to Andre. A lot of fun having him on this table. Hopefully uh, some of you all stick around to watch the remaining players on this table. I know a lot of you Andre fans were coming out to support your boy, which is always, always appreciated. Been a lot of fun having you guys check us out, even if you were only rooting for one guy. Going to have to check out his channel later, that's for sure. For sure. I'm glad he came in. I'm glad he, uh, he played. And... Obviously, uh, he, he's done an excellent job to outlast 961 players to make it down to the final nine. Excellent final showing seven. there from him. Final, final, seven. Seven. final seven. Final seven. I'll sell the boy me. short. Final seven. He did good. Excellent showing there from Drake. Seventh out of 961. Nothing to laugh at. Nothing to be unhappy about. Just got caught bluffing. So meanwhile, short stack Keaton. All in from out. the button. No problem at all, Dre fans. Y'all, uh, y'all, y'all have been fun. Yeah, very fun. <laughs> Wonderful hosting, you guys. And as Shane pointed out, Keaton, three big blinds, did get the sneaky ladder there. We're going to see if he can fade elimination himself on this one or find a double up. Ace 10 versus Queen Jack. A little 60 40. A little better than that coin flip for Keaton. Let's see if his ace-10 can hold. Or if Nikki can find the queen or jack. Doesn't on the flop. Trey, Trey, deuce. Wrong paint card. King on the turn and then mm. deuce on the river. So Keaton Full finds double. that double. Full double for your boy. Near a triple because the small and big blind. Small blind and big blind both folded. So he went from three blinds to nine. Just like that. Blink of an eye for Keaton. Chipping up nicely. Uh, so Jessica says in chat, Dre will be back. So, I mean, I guess we'll get to hang out with all the uh, the Dre fans on chat when he makes another deep run in one of the events later this week. Again, this being event one, $400 buy-in, 100K guarantee that uh, over tripled the guarantee, I believe. Almost 100K for first place, 67,000 up top.
Carnes Keaton did let go of it here as we saw Nikki open it up. King Jack from under the gun gets over to Pablo with Ace Queen. Two of the biggest stacks at the table. Look destined to battle. See if Pablo wants to put in a sizable three bet or if he puts in the call. And he looks like he's just going to call, under rep his hand. Maybe try to trap something like Ace Jack, Ace 10. Also, invites Daniel along, which always going to spice this one up. So suddenly, three ways, 1.2 million in the way with a queen high flop, queen. 9-5, all clubs. So Nikki the preflop raiser, going to continuation bet with his hand. He's got a gut shot straight draw, plus the jack of clubs. Pablo with top hair, top kicker, going nowhere. Pretty quickly puts in the call. Daniel also going nowhere. He's got a straight draw, looking for a 6, as well as the 8 of clubs. So big pot ballooning up. New chip leader could emerge, and wow, what a turn card it is. And the ace of clubs. Daniel and Nikki improve to flush as Pablo improves a two pair. He goes check check over to Pablo. Sitting with two pair. Just gonna check it back. Hopes to fill up. Hard not to think somebody has a club out there. And it comes six of clubs on the river. So flush on board. And after it checked around the flop, it's hard to put anybody on a king of clubs. You would expect the nut flush to bet out. So maybe. Somebody's thinking about bluffing at it. Said Nikki gonna bet for value. Holding the second nut flush. Bet's a little under one third pot. Hoping to get looked up by a 10 of clubs. You know, somebody in there like Daniel with his eight of clubs. It's easy, easy to try to look Nikki up. That's what Pablo is gonna do. He's gonna put in the call. And look at Daniel just I think Daniel was getting ready to put in the call if Pablo let it go. Now he's sitting back, got to change his plan. Daniel might be very lucky to save that 700,000 because pretty sure he was clicking call very fast when it got to him. Pablo complicated things by putting in a call of his own. Daniel lets it go and Nikki is going to scoop in a massive pot. Almost 4 million in chips about to go Nikki's way. With that second nut flush. And there you hear Daniel say it. He was going to put in the call if Pablo folded. And Pablo kicking himself a little bit, saying he should have folded. Oh, see if Pablo can detilt himself a little bit. He's kicking himself for not three betting pre flop with the ace queen. Putting in the call on the river, trying to call for a chop. So kicking himself for two different decision points on the same hand. See if he can shake it, continue playing his game. Got a lot of chips to work with, but in the meantime, that chipped up Nikki, Nikki pretty well. He'll be vying for that top spot with over 40 big blinds. As it's going to be him and Daniel in a raised pot to a king for deuce, two heart flop. Daniel did flop top pair. Top pair is going to be good enough as he bets. Gets to take the pot down. He does show Nikki the goods. Trying to buy some good faith for some blind on blind violence later, potentially. As we'll imagine, especially being six handed. Button's going to fly around a bit faster. They're going to run into each other pretty often. Both of them a rather deep stack, too. Can't, they can't think that they're going anywhere anytime soon. Keaton, the short stack under the gun, has to let go of the 5 4 suited. Can't play that with only nine big blinds. Pablo getting out of there. Now, actual Charlie, King 10 suited with nine blinds himself. He's going to go with a raise. Felt like both options were on the table open shove or just put in a small raise. 
Small raise was the choice. Either way, everybody lets it go, and he gets to drag in that one. I feel like I'm not going to go back and watch this. So that is going to put Keaton in the big blind. Again, <laughs> Keaton. That'll be nice. That'll be nice. You're the Irishman on St. Patty's Day. But uh, Keaton in the big blind. It is one of the short stacks. I just want to watch that one. Should have about eight big blinds effective. Maybe only seven behind, including his one in the big blind. The one dead is the ante. As Pablo looks down at seven's first act. So he's going to raise things up, makes it 350 to go. Daniel with a pocket pair going to put in the call. So these two familiar friends get in there. Now Nikki get in the mix. So the three biggest chip stacks are all in this pot so far. Worlds could collide as Keaton looks down at ace, nine of hearts. With all this dead money, he may be tempted to just rip it in, try to squeeze it. Same time getting such an amazing price to put in the call. So call is the choice. Four ways we go in a raised pot. And put a flop it is for Keaton, ace, nine, nine. Doesn't get any better than that. Flops the rest of them pretty much dead. Barring some uh, running quads or running straight flush outs. Everybody's going to check it around. Off to a turn we go, which is a 10 of spades. So now Nikki did turn and open a straight draw. We're going to see Keaton bet out rather than check it this time. He's praying to get looked up. Goes small. 300,000 into a little over 1.5. Gets looked up by Pablo as he puts in the call. I see Daniel get out of the way. Now, Nikki open-ended puts in the call as well. So, three ways to the river we go. Here comes King of Spades. Going to be hard for Keaton to get called off with any sort of bet with that river card. But fortunate for him, he got so much value on that turn. This is going to be a big pot going his way when things are said and done. He'll be around 20 big blinds after starting that hand with only about eight. So Keaton, obviously, going all in. Spades completed, some straight draws completed. You got a player behind you. Hard to imagine that Pablo's going to put in the call with an under pair to this board. Let's hear him say it. There's a player behind me. Let's it go. Nikki, just Jack High, going to fold as well. And Keaton gets to rake in a massive pot. Without a showdown, he went from the short stack of eight big blinds to start the hand to 20 big blinds in front of him. Very fortunate sequence of event there. <laughs> Daniel saying that he was thinking about raising pre-flop, but well, Keaton's stack, he may have had to stick it in, regardless of the ace nine suited. So it might not have worked for you, Daniel. So Nikki's turn with the ace nine. He has to raise it up. Ace nine off suit. Goes with the min click to 320. Folds all the way onto Pablo's big blind. See if he wants to defend with the 10 do suited. So the players are sitting around 37 big blinds effective, so not really sure. We could see him continue. He is going to put in that call. So it's just going to be Pablo and Nikki going heads up. A little bit different than the four way flop we saw last time. <coughs> Well, ace nine remains undefeated as Nikki flops three aces. Action goes check, check. Jack on the turn. Delayed C bet from Nikki now, praying to get something out of Pablo. Pablo with just a 10 high. No flush draw, no straight draw. Pretty quick, easy fold for him, and Nikki chips back up to that 40 big blind mark. Nikki emerging as the chip leader. 
Mostly goes back to a huge pop that was pay played right before the players went on a short break. Where he picked off a pretty big bluff by Keaton. That's why we saw Nikki resume as a chip lead. Keaton resume as a one of the short stacks. Now nobody's short. Maybe James. Still sitting on 10 big blinds. Is the shortest stack at the table. Obviously 10 big blinds. One double up and you're right there with everybody else. So We'll see who wants to try to keep stealing away. So we see Keaton trying to steal the blinds here. Opening with King 4 suited. Charlie with a very defendable ace 7 of hearts. Has a short stack. Just going to 3-bet shove. Keaton's going to have to let it go. And Charlie started that hand with about 10 big blinds himself. So chipping up to 14 after that takedown. Against a button open. You know it can be light. Just 3-bet shove. Take down the dead 4. Much, much better to just take the chips there for Charlie than possibly putting in a call. Face a C-bet and have to fold if you don't hit with your ace. Folds around to Pablo's button. We're going to see him open it up with King Queen, that's for sure. Huh? If he gets there I would have seen him with raise it up with a lot of hands. This is definitely one of them. And now again, Charlie with a three bet shove with a suited ace. Might not get it through this time around. This action gets back to Pablo facing the three bet shove. These two have. Battled in tournaments pretty often. Pablo aware that Charlie is a capable player. Charlie very much aware that Pablo is going to be opening his buttons light. It's a pretty strong hand for Pablo to have in this formation. <laughs> so here Pablo trying to get a chip count. would be a sizable dent in Pablo's stack. Take him down to around the 25 big blind mark. Obviously doesn't want to give up any chips. King Queen on the stronger side of things. Very torn. Very torn here is Pablo. And he actually lets it go in the end. Thought he was going to find a call, but after he folds, Charlie's going to show him an ace. Let him know he did fold a worse hand. King Queen very close indeed is Charlie probably pretty happy to see that Pablo folded that one. So rather than near flipping for his tournament life, Charlie gets to chip up yet again. Closer to the 15, 16 big blinds. And they're getting the button after the blinds went through him. Action folds around to Pablo again. Not going to open things this time with a nine tray. So it'll be Charlie on the button. Looking down at an ace. And off all those chips he just accumulated in the last two hands. We're going to see him probably put in a raise here. Looks like just a call instead. Maybe Daniel to the left of him. No reason to get out of line in any way. And you can kind of just play him face up. We've seen Daniel... Get a little creative. Nikki very formidable in the big blind. Just checks his options. Looks down at eight high. Ten high flop quick checks around. Now an eight diamonds falls on the turn. So Daniel open ended, gonna lead out. Nikki turned a pair of eights. Looks like he's gonna put in the call. So Charlie the best hand. Pre-flop, not so much anymore. He's getting out of the way. So it'll be Daniel, Nikki, going to a turn. Daniel hoping to improve. Nikki 
hoping to hold on, and Nikki does hold on. Daniel just queen high. Action goes pretty quick, check, check. Nikki gets to take it down. The rich get richer. Daniel getting a little frustrated. Just like that, blinds going up. 100K, 200K now. The short stacks are going to feel the pressure, especially James the Irishman there in the one seat. He was a short stack, and now on his big blind, big blinds go up on him. Going to make things a little bit worse. He's got to post two big blinds in the middle. It's a big portion of his stack. He's going to hope to wake up with a hand. Also imagine he's short enough where nobody should be trying to steal his blind overly light since he's going to have to play uh, getting it in, trying to find a double up. A lot of different holdings. A lot easier to steal the blinds with somebody with uh, wiggle room to let it go. Let's see what can develop with the short stack in the big blind. Keaton letting go of the suited connectors. Pablo with a pair. Deuces from early position with a short stack in the big blind. He's just going to let it go. Now action folds over to Nikki in the small blind. I said about 1.2. All right, so all in and call. Nikki versus James the Irishman. A great spot for James. King I mean, eight versus Jack eight. As you can see, the percentages are are pretty uh <laughs> pretty one sided. James here is going to be poised to win this hand, and stays poised on the nine high flop. Turn, still poised. River, very poised. The Perfect. most amount of poise you can be. 100% there for James on the river. But the short stack finds a double. James the Irishman on St. Patty's Day. It just makes too much sense in the, na in the name. It does. I mean, luck of the Irish, you can just spin it any way you want. He's the one that's winning, and um, it's kind of hard not to say it's a little... I think the only way they can, they can eliminate him is if they get past midnight. We're, uh, we're over here on the East Coast <laughs> coming to you from Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> That's they can when he get loses out of St. Patrick's Day, yeah. If you're rewatching this later, we're coming to you uh, on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, everybody watching live, I think, already knows that. We'll see if James can uh, ship one for the Irishman. I'm chipped up to about 15 big blinds there. So now, nobody overwhelmingly short. We saw him and Charlie both chip up, gain a little bit of life. They were both feeling it pretty hard, sub-10 big blinds, but both found a way to accumulate some chips in the last orbit. So themselves right back in the running. Action starts on Pablo. First act with Jack-9. Gonna let it go. Charlie and Daniel out of the way. Over to Nikki's button with Jack-10. Easily see him open. Yeah, there's the open there from Nikki to 400,000. Yep, 400,000. The new min raise. Those blinds just went up two hands ago to 100, 200. Jesus, the blinds are so big, man. Like 2.9 million is only 14 bigs. They only get bigger. And again, we're going to see James rip it all in, and this time Nikki's got to let it go. So just like that, James up to 20 big blinds. That's a huge, huge move for him. Back-to-back -back hands chipping up. That's what you want to do, especially when the money's on the line. And you can go from 8 to 20. It's just uh, breathe a lot easier. <laughs> and 
So Matron Charlie going to let it go with 10-8 suited under the gun. He is the new short stack at the table. He's going to raise, uh, raise it up to 550. Yeah, Daniel raising it up almost 3x. Big open on this table. Oh, and, oh it's his friend, Pablo. <laughs> Daniel has been calling out Pablo all night. And Pablo wakes up with aces in the big blind against Daniel's big open. Let's see what Pablo wants to do. Just going to rip it. He thinks Daniel's got a big hand with this big open. And now Daniel. <laughs> that is the best answer ever as a dealer. Just like, would, I mean, Daniel's a character, right? So I don't give him any benefit of the doubt. So when you're asking, he covers. Do not ask me to count any chips. He covers. But how much is a dealer? He covers. I'm just going to keep saying he covers. So after maybe a little fake deliberation, we see Daniel let go. A6 offsuit. Can't imagine he was actually going to stick it in there. Even against Pablo. <coughs> he was definitely not putting it in there. Definitely not? Yep. The, ooh, the double negative. Definitely. Definitely not putting it in. <clears throat> Daniel's going to put in the lie about oh, the strength man. of his hand, saying that he folded ace 10. But probably has to fold ace 10 also, so. Right, gets around it. James going to have to let it go, so Keaton on the button. This time with a pretty big hand, 12 big blind stack. We've seen him try to steal the blinds a few times. I think it was the last orbit he opened, and Charlie three bet shoved. So, same pattern for Keaton, just gonna open it up with a minimum. And now Pablo, Queen Jack. Again, we saw Keaton open his button on the last orbit, so maybe that's in Pablo's mind. Uh oh. Might be tempted to put in a 3-bet here. Instead, just the call. Now, action on Charlie. Looks down at an ace. This is real similar to what happened last time when Charlie just ripped it with the ace. He somehow just knows the exact right move, lets it go. Thought he may be putting in the call or a 3-bet. Gets out of the way. All comes down eight high. Eight five five. Pablo gonna check it. See if Keaton wants to put out a C bet, and if so, how much? How much? Three hundred thousand. Yep. Just goes with a one quarter pot size C bet. <laughs> Pablo's gonna float here. Puts in the call. Maybe Pablo will try to rep. I think something that connects with this board, especially on a seven of clubs turn. Checks it over. And there it is. Check back from Keaton. It opens the door for Pablo to go after it. Wouldn't be a surprise to see Pablo go for it here on the river. This board connects really well with a person out of the blinds calling a raise from the button. You have all the suited connectors. Everything that kind of smashed this board. Especially when Keaton checks back the turn. And he has eight big blinds. So. That's why he was kind of handcuffed to having to check back that turn. There it is. Big what bet from Pablo. One million. And Keaton's going to start counting his stack. Maybe he knows. This is a big bet. If Pablo had a monster, would he bet smaller for value? Same time, it's more than half your chip stack. you got to really love your read to go with it here. And there's just a visible, like, from, from up here, obviously, I, I, I could see more than rather maybe sitting in, uh, in, in the spot that Keaton's sitting. But Pablo looked visibly uncomfortable. You heard Keaton just said, I would love to go back and see that one. He looked visibly uncomfortable when he bet the million. Like, he just didn't look like he was, I don't know, just the, his What's posture, that? everything just seemed off. I think, I think that's what Keaton saw, too. And that's why I say I think he, he thinks his hand was best. It was just a really bad run out. Bad chip stack. Frustrating. Frustrating when yeah. you kind of know your <clears throat> opponent's probably bluffing. That nine really connected with a lot of hands. 
Oh, that was, that was good. Right. This is 200. Oh, okay. This is only for the one. Yeah, that just looked off, man, on the river. He just... Yeah. Heart was beating there pretty fast. Like, you know, you can see, see his chest moving up and down. It just... You saw that? Yeah. I mean, it just so happens his shirt was tight right, enough we got, good. We got an all in here. Don't mean to take you... Make you take a break from explaining Pablo's breathing, but... We saw Nikki raise and Keaton shove. Do you want to see it? I said, that's, what I had. <laughs> so that's what I had. If you want to see it, he's not lying. He did have aces. Yeah, I guess Nikki's getting an exact chip count here. Is Keaton's all in for his tournament life. Yeah, I missed up. And a total count of 1.7 million. Nikki originally opened to 400. There is the call. So, classic race here. King Queen suited versus Pocket Jacks. Almost dead even in equity. I mean, Keaton hoping to win this coin flip for his big double up. Put him at almost 4 million. All right, let's see what Keaton right. can do. So, flip time, and it comes oh, king okay. high. There it is. Keaton needing a heart. Ooh. Ooh. There's a lot of life now. He's Any got some heart outs. on the river. Some additional outs. And does not get there. Does not. So GG's to Keaton. He is going to be eliminated in, I believe, sixth, sixth place. Sixth place. So Which six. means he'll be taking home $8,765. Everyone else is one step clo closer to that first place money. Keaton, though, will have to bow out in sixth place. Excellent showing once again from him. I mean, you can't really be too upset if you make this final table, right? Like, your eyes are on the prize. You want the first place money, but to, to be in the position they are in, congrats to all the players, and more specifically, Keaton, thank you for playing. Yeah, sixth place out of 961. Can't complain. Obviously, once you're there, you want to keep on going, want to keep on winning. But now we're left with five. All five of these guys got over 10K locked up, 10,300 the next payout. Starts feeling pretty nice when you get to put another uh, put another digit in there. Okay, this is a 400 hour buy in. Event one of the Run Good series here at Best Bet Jacksonville. Coming to you live on a very slight delay, Northeast Florida. Day two resumed today at 12 p.m. Here we sit a little over 10 hours later. We sit here. James sits here with Ace King suited first act. Gets to open things up. Oh wow! Daniel with a playable Ace Queen. Uh oh. Doesn't three bet shove. Thought he might zing it in there with 14 bigs. Instead, just calls. And now Nikki with a beautiful playable Queen Ten of Hearts in the big blind, getting a nice price to put in a call. So he's happily going to come along for that cheap. Three players out of the five on this final table go into a flop. And Jack, 6-4, all spades come on board. So Daniel, with the ace of spades, open shoves it. Oh, boy. And this is going to get the job done, I think. going to be hard for James to put in a call just ace-king high. It's a very fortunate flop for Daniel to be able to steal this one away. Thought he was drawn near dead. Instead, he's going to chip up. So I thought that hand could be disastrous for Daniel somehow. Turns into a beautiful one for him. I'd like to know that I think you still might have been ahead. I don't know. You had yeah, barely. Pablo with deuces, first to act. Pocket pair, five-handed. Obviously, don't love looking down at small pair under the gun, given the fact that we're short-handed now. We're going to see him raise oh it up. Oh, my God. And given the blinds, I mean, this isn't even really like a, an egregious raise. It's fine. 
just a cool half mil. Everybody's got to let it go. Pablo will take it down. Okay, once again, do appreciate everybody that's hanging out, watching along with us. We had a lot of people tuning in and rooting on Dre earlier. Now curious to see who everybody out here is rooting for out of these final five. If you got anybody specifically you'd like to see take home the trophy and ring, just let us know. Got to see who the new fan favorite is. Just too curious. Up, gets on Pablo and he's trying to goad him. Daniel been needling Pablo pretty much the whole night. Had the best of him most times. Most recently we saw uh, Pablo get the best of his aces, but these two have been pretty chirpy. <laughs> so it looks like the majority of people out there at this point are rooting for Charlie. I see a, I see a James sighting over in Facebook. Somebody rooting on James. Let's see who can take it down. James, the Irishman, no less, on St. Paddy's Day. Almost makes too much sense. Charlie. Local fan favorite. Been a tournament wizard the last couple of years. Know he's capable of closing them out. Let's see if he can do so. Feels like it's anybody's game on this table. All five players could be the one. You see two of them, Nikki and Charlie, both flopping a pair of trays on Queen Ten Tray. He was the pre-flop raiser. Put out a small C bet. Charlie puts in the call. Seven on the turn. Action's going to go check, check. Now River Deuce. Charlie hits it. Looks like he's going to bet for some value. Looks like about a one-third pot size bet, a little over half a million. 600. Oh, 600, in fact. Now, Nikki with a pair of trays. Is there a chance Charlie's bluffing here with a missed straight draw like King Jack? Or does he have a real hand? Obviously, Nikki hoping to pick off a bluff if he puts in the call. Hard to beat any sort of real hand. After some deliberation, we're going to see Nikki let it go. <laughs> Charlie going to chip up. Gets him up to around 14 bigs after that hand. Very nice deuce on the river for him. So if he breaks out, pretty sure they go check check as they're both holding a pair. Again with a very playable hand. Monster even, Ace King, gonna open it up. <laughs> Nothing for James here. Gives it over to Pablo. Jack 10 offsuit on the button. Gonna see him just get out of the way. Doesn't necessarily want to play against Nikki's under the gun opening range. Over to Charlie. Easy full with the five deuce, but Daniel. A little bit of a wild card in the big blind. Going to put in the call the Queen 7 offsuit. So Daniel and Nikki. Pumping heads again. Ace, Trey, Deuce. He flops like a monster. 
revolver in my throat. Nikki throws out the C bet. Daniel's got to let it go. And pot going Nikki's way. Puts Daniel back around 20 big blinds. These guys are all jockeying for position right now. No overwhelmingly short stack. Could be anybody's game. No, I'm not going to call. Blind. You're going blind? Just ask. Craig, Craig it up a notch. Well, that's a strong loop on the Irishman. I'm saying, man. The Irishman is past the bedtime. It's time to pass. Two to go. <laughs> All right, so James the Irishman gets out of the way. First act. Round 13 bigs will be big blind next hand. Meantime, Pablo looking down an ace, gets to open things up. Does get through Charlie's button. Now gets through Daniel in the small blind. I think he's got to let it go at jack four off. Pablo will rake it in uncontested. Looks like he flashed the ace there. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel, for finally folding to me. One of the few times he has. So again, James in the big blind there. Did start this hand with about 13 bigs. Him and Charlie pretty close to chip stack. I'm sorry. We're going to see Charlie limp in with queen eight suited. Just to see how this creates any developments as two shorties might be destined to see a flop. But before they do, it's Nikki in the small blind with jack 10. Looks like he's going to raise it up, put some pressure on. And it's going to work for him. Both short stacks just get out of there. Nikki drags it. If you have no pair, you fold it. Why is that 600, of course? Very interesting hearing everybody getting pretty talkative on this final table. You don't see it this late in the game too often. What's that being talked about at this level? Yeah, Five-handed final table of a tournament. They're yeah. talking about hands. They're talking a whole lot. Way more than usual. Really? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the book? No, he didn't block. I said it's three. Because he had the three. I said maybe he got it. Daniel just calls with Queen 10 suited. Looks like it's going to. Hold around to the big blind. Of course, it's his neighborhood friend, Pablo. He's been getting the best of him in this matchup so far. It's going to be hard to get the best of him with seven deuce, even though he's contemplating what to do here. Maybe trying to see if he puts pressure on Daniel with that chip stack, if it'll work. Comes to the conclusion, maybe I don't want to try that with Daniel. Just goes ahead and puts a check in. Does flop a pair. Yeah. Bottom pair on ace jack seven. All spades on board too, a little scary, but action goes check, check. Pablo leads turn, gets to take it down. Daniel could have easily fired out the flop there and probably gotten it. Mm -hmm. Could have ripped having an ace, he had a straight draw in his hand. Pablo at bottom pair and no spade. Might have just gotten out of there. And even, if he, even if he fires on the flop and Pablo does call, he still's got, he still has outs. You know, he's, got, he's not drawing dead. Suited. <laughs> and there it is. Daniel just volunteering what hand he had. Everybody happy to listen in. I like how you said Nikki was a sleeper and he almost has 7 million in chips. Sleepy 7 million, yeah. 
but this works out pretty good and as far as who you picked as a winner. And speaking of Nikki, he's raising it up with Queen 10 after Daniel limped in. He's We've seen Daniel limp fold. This time though, quick call after the limp. Puts the call at 9-7 suited. Mm. And they both flop a pair on 10-9-5. Nikki's 10 is best. And Nikki fires. Danny snap calls. Now eight on the turn as a straight draw to both. Action goes check, check. King on the river. Might slow him down as well as it's a scare card. Action goes check, check again. And Nikki, rich, getting richer, stacking more chips. Daniel. Flustered clear there. Clear frustration, too. Wow. Keep rolling. Obviously, this final table is heating up. You know, tilt setting in. I could see some uh, eliminations here in the future. Stacks are getting short. It's time to, time to what is what is they put up or shut up. Well, Pablo's going to put up a raise here. I think Ace Jack suit on the button. He's raising a lot of hands on the button. This is a premium. He does bump it up, Charlie. Going to have to three-bet shove with the King Jack. Sticks it in. Pablo with the quick call. Charlie be looking for a king to stay alive. Pretty rough situation for him. Pablo going to open a lot of buttons with any king, any ace. Charlie on the Ted Big Blind stack just has to stick it in. This is a big one. This is for a lot. Oh, it's bad. It's really no bad. king on board. Yeah, it's really bad. So king and king only for Charlie as we head to the river. It does not come. Deuce. We're going to see Charlie get eliminated here in fifth place. It does take home a little over 10,000 for that fifth place finish. Obviously, he wanted more. You can see he's not walking away uh, excited. Nobody really is when they're eliminated, but yeah, Charlie trying to make the deep run. GG's to him. Yeah, he was trying to blow Pablo off the hand, and even Pablo, I mean... Ten big blind auto shove there. Gets the button yep. open from a big stack. And now Pablo moves north of 10 million in chips. Just a few. Sometimes there's just nothing else you can do. Pablo said over 10 million. Whew. So it's him and Nikki. The two big stacks... James Irishman and Daniel kind of more dwindling. As we continue on four-handed here. In this $400 buy-in event. That's Pablo. Got to take a break from racking the chips to put some into the middle. I mean, he's Raising just, it up with Jack-10 suited. Oh, Daniel there snap. It is. Rips it. Ace-5 offsuit. Insta-rip by Daniel. I mean, Pablo's like, man, I got all the chips right now. I'm like, whatever. I hear him say, that's not good. This is the kind of hand that we could easily could have seen Pablo open with last hand. That's why you saw Charlie ship the, the King Jack. Pretty similar. Pablo, last act. Not on the button officially, but with Charlie out, he is the button here. Now, time to get some accounting. <laughs> so time to do some math. Pablo thinks uh, Daniel's got, you know, king, queen, two over types. It's a 60-40. He thinks Daniel's got a pocket pair. It's a coin flip. Well, he's going to put in the call. So here we go. Pablo, Daniel, all in. They've been chirping all night. Let's see if Daniel can find the double up or if Pablo can find a way to eliminate him. We're either going to get a lot louder or a lot quieter here after this pot. 
Diamonds. There you go. Ace and diamonds come out. Oh. Safe turn. Need a diamond, does Pablo. Diamond it is. That's it. Thought it was going to be a louder blow up. Not going to last, but I got quiet. Yep. <laughs> but we do see Pablo eliminate Daniel. I said there would be some quick uh, knockouts, so bang, and there you bang. go. So fourth place, 15K, not too shabby. Daniel's taking home there. Yep. All three of the remaining players have 24,000 locked not up. Not bad. That's not bad. So three players remain. Just been Pablo, so the overwhelming chip leader at this point. There's a pretty clear first in chips, second in chips, third in chips situation. Now James, the Irishman, going to need to try to find a way to pick some up. As the remaining shorty, three-handed, nowhere to go, nowhere to hide, nowhere to wait. Got to be involved in every hand. Boys, I'm open any <laughs> you said, boys, I'm ripping any too. You know what time it is. I mean, he knows he's short. And he's, I mean, look at the chip stacks. Like, Jesus. You just got to get it in and hope for the best. Especially wants to say that because it's his big blind. You know, I'm calling with anything, guys. Don't bully me. Just so you know, like, I'm in there with anything, so don't try to make any moves. I think he looks down at the king. And he's just going to rip it. I figured. Oh, James is going to put it in the call, I think, with a suited ace. Ace six suited. Easy all in there with seven bigs. Blind versus blind. Yep. Here we go. Another all in. This time it's for James, the Irishman, on St. Paddy's Day. Can he stay alive? He's looking for hearts, stars, and rainbows. Ace is good. That ace is way good. Thank you. That's going to hold. I'll do it. James gets the full... Double up now. So interesting dynamic of a building. Pablo's got about half the chips in play. Nikki and James kind of shrink in terms of disparity. Much closer together now. 25 bigs and 17 bigs. It's kind of interesting to see how Pablo wants to play that chip stack. Does he try to keep putting pressure on both players? You know he's going to. That's Does he just game. kind of keep playing it straight up? That's his game. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Same. Because at this point, I think in his head, he's like, even if I misclick, I still got chips. And obviously, a big, big payout difference between third and second. Neither player wants to misstep and miss out on a 15k pay jump. So put that pressure on him. How do you not do it? So it will be Pablo's big blind. Let's see if either player wants to step out and mess with him. My guess is no, but Nikki looks down at a suited queen from the button. Going to open it up. Blinds did just go up uh, during that hand, by the way. So the relative stacks get a little bit shorter. We're at a 250k big. So 200k big. We saw Pablo put in the defend. Pretty interesting as it comes down. Queen for deuce. So Nikki flops top and bottom pair. Pablo with a gut shot straight draw. Pablo checks it over. Nikki decides to check it back. He's playing it sneaky. As he probably should. That is a monster hitting two pair. And nobody will see it coming. So now delayed C bet from him after Pablo checks turn. Pablo just going to let it go with his gut shot straight draw. But there's a chance of fireworks on that flop, that's for sure. Pablo with the gut shot plus backdoor flush draw. Nikki with two pair. Pablo with the chips. Hard to put Nikki on a monster. That, that could have developed. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Instead, just because Nikki checked back flop, it fizzled out. They understand they're in control right now, right? Like, James is open. Oh, yeah, go ahead and get involved. Play a big pot. 
they can't too, they can't get too sucked into the moment to realize you know what they're playing for and, and who's at top who's on the top tricks just to try to stay zoned in play your game just make the right decisions over and over again so Nikki and Pablo again another queen high flop queen eight deuce Neither player with a pair this time. Now turn, tray of hearts. Again, neither player wants to bluff at it. King on the river. Pablo will fire. See Nikki with seven high, quickly lets it go. and There's the leveling war I'm talking about. Pot goes Pablo's way. with the button first to act on the big stack let's see what he wants to open it up to when he looks down at ace king instead just gonna limp in wouldn't expect that he was praying somebody put in a raise instead after nikki folds james checks his options oh uh, well seven high flop so beautiful for james yeah that's pretty good for him he Open to keep it clean so he can double up, but I, I think he's going to be poised to do that. So instead, it just keeps on checking through. <clears throat> I don't think James is getting anything out of this one. James is right. <laughs> Pablo says it should have raised pre-flop. James says that probably ends worse. Probably would have called an open. Seen the seven high flop. But now Nikki's turn with the button. He's going to open things up. James gets out of there. Oh boy. So one Pablo facing the raise. <laughs> Can't get a read on this guy. Sits perfectly still while he was in thought. But after the deliberation, he's going to put in the call. So it will be Pablo and Nikki heads up to a flop. Let's play Mr. Yeah. Comes down king at 10 9, two hearts. Actually, I'm going to go check, check. Board pairing 10 on the turn. Now queen on the river. So if either of these guys wake up with a jack, they have a straight action check through. So very possible that one does. Instead, action goes check, check yet again. And it looks like they showed down for a chop. Yep, ace high and ace high. Next hand, going to get underway with James on the button this time around. Pablo and Nikki in the blinds. James, the shortest of the stacks. So 
And James got out of the way. Now action on Pablo. Again, blind versus blind. These two have uh, been battling pretty often. All right, perfect. Oh, yes, I am. Thanks. <laughs> you must be Hesu. <laughs> I'm going to raise the 750 from Nikki and a quick fold for Pablo. Once again, uh, James the Irishman, he's not really have much to say. Like, you guys take care of your business. You handle what you guys got going on. I'm going to pick my moments when I can double up. Kind of just stick around. Keep going. And he has every right to do that because guess what? That pay jump from uh, third to second is something crazy. So I'm all for it. Do your thing, baby. Do your thing. All right, here we go. Jack eight versus nine four suited. All right, both both are going to find a, a piece of the flop, but Nikki's is significantly bigger. And uh, looks like James bet and Nikki folded. Interesting fold there, middle pair, three handed, but. Maybe uh, Nikki had or thought he had a read on the situation. Probably figured he was beat. Interesting, interesting. But yes, all three of these players are playing for 67K up top. We had 961 entrants. We are down to our final three players. This is only event one of our Run Good series. They came to town and... Uh, we only just started. We still got a, we still got a, a ton of events left, and uh, we'll have some live streams here coming in the near future. As Pablo is going to raise it up to seven hundred and fifty thousand. There's an all in and a quick call from Pablo with Ace Queen offsuit. So James is going to be off to the races for his tournament life with King Eight suited. King on the flop. Deuce on the turn. A jack and uh, maybe. Oh! And there's the jack on the turn to give Pablo this Broadway. Yeah, you deserve that win. Wow. Must be after midnight. <laughs> and they are down to uh, two players. Their heads up. So. They're going to go ahead and, I guess, rearrange and get things settled in. It shouldn't be any more than five to ten minutes. And then uh, we'll be back with final table. Your your final two players are Pablo and Nikki. Obviously, as you can see, and let's go ahead and put it on the screen here before we take a break. Pablo has a, almost a, what is that, three? Three to one chip lead almost over Nikki. So the question of chop is, is well, it's not going to be a question. Um... I assume both of these players are going to play it out and uh, see who can take home that 67000 So they're going to get rearranged and reset for final table, and then we're going to take a short intermission, and we'll be back uh, for the final two players of this event. Number one, $400 No Limit Hold'em final table. Yeah, can you let him know what
All right, everyone, we are back here. They did take, well, I guess I thought it would be a slight intermission, but it looks like they took the entirety of that final table or heads up break, and they are now back. So, once again, to check in, I know we guys, I know we took a much longer than anticipated break, but here's what you missed if you're just joining us. We had nine players, we're down to two. As you can see, Pablo has an overwhelming chip lead over Nikki, uh, 70 big blinds to 25. That's just one double up away from being even. One double up One definitely double. could put him... Uh, They're back to even. <clears throat> yeah, he'd be back to even. All right, so it looks like the blinds are... Uh, I mean, I, uh, two, 250 big, I yeah. believe. Yeah, 250 big. Where we left off of the... About 20 minutes left in the level. And he made it 750 to go. So it didn't sound like these guys even came close to interchanging uh, any sort of chop discussion. Nah. It was both want to win in this thing outright... There was no talks during the break. They each kind of went their separate ways. And now came back to battle it out for that trophy. And run good series ring there in the middle. Along with, you know, 67,000 up top. Nothing wrong with that. 67K is a big chunk of change for, uh, you know, four, a $400 buy-in. And it looks like uh, Nikki bet 400. We might lose the graphics here, and I, I do apologize for it, but... It looks like Nikki bet 400k and then Pablo raised to a million. And he said he said he's can't, he can't do anything. You won't actually. Sick bluff by Pablo there. Super Sing. sick bluff. You'll see it on TV. I mean, Pablo got off to just an overwhelming chip lead that no one no one could really kind of knock him off of the top. I mean. Your memory is better than mine. That's that's been proven. Has Pablo just ever like taken any hits? He's kind of been in the lead most of the way. He took a few here and there, <coughs> but every time there was like kind of the opportunity to retake the lead and then put pressure, he did it. All right, so we did get the graphics put in. So it looks like Pablo had a flush draw, and Nikki was just kind of bluffing at it. Um, and now I believe they're good to go. Man. So I mean, if you're a Pablo fan in the chat, he's made it. Like, he's made it all the way here. And barring a monumental meltdown, I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will have him winning this heads-up battle, but it's not over yet. Nikki's still in. I don't want to make it seem like he's uh, his impending loss is coming. I, I think he has a shot, so let's see if he can make good on that. He's got to raise 500K and a call from Pablo. King-7 offsuit. Hmm. Both are going to pop a piece. Open ender for Nikki. Yeah, and, uh, sevens for Pablo. Second pair on board. Ooh. Mm. Seven on the turn. Things could get spicy. Nikki going to bet. After Pablo, do you want a smooth call? Or put in the raise now? If he thinks Nikki has a straight draw, he might want to charge it. If he thinks Nikki could be out here bluffing with, like, just some naked King Jack or Jack 10 for, you know, gut shot. Maybe you just call and let the bluff stay in. I mean, perfect river card to do it. Well, oh, Nikki didn't pull the trigger and bluff. You hear Pablo say, good check. Yeah, he was Pablo was definitely setting the trap. I think if Nikki was a little bit weaker than King High, like Queen High, Jack High, he probably goes for a bluff. Still a small chance King High good. Uh, Anthony asking, well, he thinks that everybody here is lucky. Where can he join a game? Well, we're coming to you live from Best Bet here in Jacksonville, Florida. This is event number one of the Run Good series. So if this is the first event. That means there's going to be more. You know, take your shot against some of these lucky guys like Nikki and Pablo here. We've got events running all week, culminating next weekend in the main event. No shortage in opportunity. Pablo going to open it up. He's going to keep that aggression on. 9-5 offsuit, deciding to open it. Nikki going to go ahead and rip it in with an ace. A 15 big blind stack. Nothing wrong with this shove here. Just take it to down. Most likely. Asking for a chip count. Yeah, he does that. 
It'll also just be an opportunity to kind of recalibrate what's my stack at, what's his stack at at the same time. Yeah, he does that from time you to know. time. When I fold, is that going to put him at what? Okay. 20 bigs. All right. So after getting that count, we're going to see Pablo let go of that 9 high. Nikki going to chip up. Again, that'll put Nikki around 20 big blinds. Still a lot to try and come back from. Pablo holding close to a 4-1 to chip lead. Nikki's going to try to find a double. Close that gap. Let's see if he can. Oh, thank you, Ann. Ann says good commentary. Appreciate it. Appreciate everybody tuning in and watching along. I know me and Adonis have been here having a lot of fun today. Hope everybody out there is having some fun as well. Yeah, it's been it's been fun. I mean, it is I, a holiday. You know, I just I mean these guys have been playing from noon. Uh, they played a very long flight last night as well. I don't know if these either of these guys were a part of that flight, but it's been a lot of poker being played, and we're happy you guys are hanging out so long. We got Nikki bluffing out of here with just seven highs. This was a limped pot, no raise pre-flop. Now Nikki stabbing at the flop. Pablo going to put in the call with his gut shot straight draw. King on the turn. Doesn't change too much. Pablo still looking to hit a jack for the straight. Nikki with just seven high. River. Pairing the deuce on board. Pablo with ten high. Nikki with seven high. Pablo going to be first to act. Just checks it over. Nikki can find the bluff. It may work. Here, Nikki announced 700,000 for the bet. Pablo just 10 high. Very tough. Even if you read your opponent for a bluff, he could be bluffing with jack high. We're going to see Pablo have to let it go. Nikki finds a pot. See if he can keep building that momentum. Trying to chip up, close that gap. He's trying to. It's, a bad, it's, it's right around a 3 to 1 chip lead again. See if he can do it. Yeah, I mean, one sizable pot takes it back to a two to one chip lead. One double up really closes that gap, puts him closer to even. Pablo obviously going to try to dodge giving away any big pots. Just keep leaning and leaning and leaning on his opponent. Yeah, like I said, pending a monumental meltdown. And oh, monster boy. here. Pablo oh, just limps in. Oh, boy, this is bad. And Nikki puts in the raise with the king seven. He oh, said just, suited a very reasonable raise. Just flatting here would be absolutely probably like hand of the night, right? Like if you can get a flop where Nikki can connect, but like let's say Pablo like flops the set, Nikki thinks he's he's got him where he wants well, him. He's never going to see it coming. Step one is the flat. It's playing it tricky, and yeah. oh my, yeah. disaster for Nikki on a yeah. king high flop. There you go. Heads up, flopping top pair is Nikki. This that was the hand for the set. tournament. Check check. Ten on the turn could slow the action down a bunch though. Now any nine or ace make a straight. Action goes check, check. Oh, wow. that's what I was talking about. So, that's what I was talking about right there. So now Nikki with trip kings does fire out a value bet. Pablo obviously going to raise up just no matter what size. And can he get looked up by Nikki here with three kings? 2.5 million. Yeah, he's going for the max. He's hoping Nikki has an ace or a flush even in diamonds. If this he read, if he read Nikki for a king, he probably would have gone smaller. He's hoping, hoping Nikki has a monster hand. Nikki he does calls. put in the call though. He thinks Pablo's bluffing. Wow! So he read it for a very polarized raise. And just what a freaking hand! It's a bluff. Jeez. I mean, I'm not. Once again, I'm not going to count Nikki out. But man, that is a devastating and and that's a that's a. That's a close, close to near death blow. I mean, it's hard to come back from a hit like that. I don't even need to put the chip count on the screen. I think we all know uh, how how that how that hand went. It's not looking good. Yeah, it's not looking good. Pablo has 21 million. Nikki has 2.3 million. Tough sledding. You could say tough sledding for Nikki. Yeah, just brutal there. 
He caught him pretty light, too. Yeah. I mean, any nine or ace make a straight. Three diamonds on board. I think it might be too much out there that beat you, but I don't know, Nikki went with a read. I mean, Pablo there just flatting, not three betting there with queens. I mean, heads up. This is where this is where heads up, you know, heads up play is so important. You know, that was a that was a good just call there by by Pablo. Makes it 750. I just call. And right now, I think if Nikki can even sniff a piece of this flop, he's just going to be all in. I think now his head is completely out of it. You know, like. It's just like in any other sport. Like once your head is out of the game, you, you're you're just bound to slip up. You're bound to make you know quote unquote mistakes. So, Let's see um, if Pablo wants to keep leaning on him because he put in the raise here. Does have a face card with the jack? Decides just to limp in. Yeah, at this point, yeah, you, you catch a piece, you're just gonna be all in no matter what. And Screw it. And quick check back. There's the piece. You got Let's a nine, and you each. got a four high flush draw. Pablo with a five and a flush draw. There it is. All in. And, and a call. quick call from Pablo. So He's maybe. got a pair of fives and a jack high flush draw. So Nikki doesn't want to make his flush. He wants to keep his pair of nines. You can see they're flipping here. And oh, That's club it. is going to end it. That's Pablo for the with the win. That is for the tournament. Pablo will be event one of our Run Good Series No Limit Hold'em $400 tournament champion. He's going to be taking home, as I put it up on the screen, he will be the lone uh, Pablo's going to be taking home $67,805. Nikki there kind of lost it towards the end there in that Queens versus King 7 hand. He'll be taking home $39,690. So uh, that's going to do it for our final table. My name is Adonis. I appreciate all of you for joining us. Mike, any words for, for, for them before we let them go? I nah, appreciate everybody tuning in, watching with us the whole way. Players didn't shop. Pablo won it outright. Good way to kick off the series. Look forward to bringing you guys some more events throughout the week. All right, we'll see you guys back here uh, tomorrow for the women's tournament and final table, and then hopefully for a few more final tables. Have a great night.